This is a HeadGum Podcast. This week on the program, why invest in groundbreaking animatronics when you can just dump in some of the worst CGI you've ever seen in your life? It's an American werewolf in Paris. I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadek has zero sex points. <laughs> Eric Siska. Suck le bleu. Chris Cabin. <laughs> and we hate movies. We all go a little mad sometimes. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? Sometimes. That is what I... Zombies have entered the building. They're at the door. They're coming in. It is time to keep your appointment with the Wicker Man. They're coming to get you, Barbara. He's sick for fuck's sake. You've seen one too many movies. Now, Sid, don't you blame the movies! Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. Put the fucking ocean in the bag. What an excellent day for an exorcism. Hello, everyone. Welcome to We Hate Movies. Thank you for tuning in. As always, that's right. Welcome to it. We're in it now. We're fist deep uh, in the oh. We Hate Movies Halloween Spooktacular. We're talking an American werewolf in Paris from 1997 directed by some guy named <laughs> Anthony Waller. Wait, there's fisting in this movie? Did I miss something? I wish there was fisting in this movie. Extra half star on Letterboxd. Yeah, hey, Tom Everett, bend over and I'll show yeah, you. Get in the cruising <laughs> sling and get ready for <laughs> it. Even if they had like a puppet play one of these fucking wolf things. Dude, imagine Tom Everett Scott goes up to a werewolf when he just goes, um... Hips or lips. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, just accidentally, Teeth. And, and this is not going to happen. Uh, this is not going to be um, throughout the rest of the month. But we're still doing two, 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 right. two, 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 two. We should me mention at the top that one is available on the Patreon. <laughs> yes. American Werewolf in London, vastly superior. Oh my film. God! In yeah. literally. Every way imaginable. Also known as the good one. Yes. <laughs> That's patreon.com slash we ate movies for a full length episode. Uh, and before, uh, with, featuring some really dirty Muppet stuff, if I remember properly. Yes, something. The, whatever that Muppet show, like the fake Muppets yeah. they're watching on oh, the right. TV. Because it's during the like the dream sequence yeah. with the, the Nazi werewolves. I think we have like a whole bit about what, like Kermit fucking or something? It's, 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 you're going to love it, folks. Before we give that away for free, let me just hit play really quickly. Oh, shit. coming soon to theaters. I knew it. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, boy. It's a very spooky VHS trailer uh, game. Uh, America's favorite game show that revolves around obsolete materials. We are here in season two. It's season two for legends. <laughs> These are legends. America's favorite, huh? Yeah. Uh, do we, we have a poll out or something? <laughs> I did some, yeah. I, 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 construct, I, uh, I uh, talked to a very shady firm. They were able to confirm that for American me. American Idol is out, buddy. <laughs> it's all about the VHS trailer game now. By the way, are you phasing between two timelines? Why? This is season 12. Oh, no, but season two of the VHS trailer. I got season 12 of the... Yeah, all right. Yeah. Season 12 is season, the season of legends. There we go. Legends. <laughs> legends. And I think I'm going to be saying... Damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, but not yet because Eric Sisk is currently in the lead. I don't have the we, points in front of me, yeah. but I do know last last month Eric cleaned up because one of the movies Chris was filmed you. in his house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's actually true. I didn't want to tell tell too much, but uh, I actually the car I learned to drive on, we sold it to uh, one, it was an actor's father. Anyway. Really? Wow. I was like embedded with the adventures of Sebastian <laughs> Cole. I think if I'm if I'm recalling the points correctly, because I was just editing the Varsity yeah. Blues episode before okay. you guys came over, I want to say it's 15-10 yes. in Eric's favor. That and you're, right. you're not on the board yet. I, I ate shit. I ate fucking shit that first round. Well, good news. There's four rounds this time. I, they're all, actually, there's like Two, you're going to have fun this month. I'll just say that. Um, mm -mm. Can I just say something else really quickly? Please. Anyway, I just want to say congratulations, man, on winning the movie trivia game on your podcast. It's pretty extraordinary. <laughs> That's all. I just Thank to say you that. so much. You know. I love it. I love what Ernie Hudson drops by to congratulate Chris again on winning the... <laughs> 
trivia game on his podcast. Thank you. Irving. I heard it's very extraordinary. Yeah. <laughs> extraordinary. I love, I love the man so much. I, that the word extraordinary isn't ruined for me, but I'll never not think about Ernie Hudson without yeah. thinking of that. No, nope. yeah. oh, I mean also yeah. the word podcast. <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> it's your podcast. <laughs> he's got. He's had to have listened to a po- not this show. But I don't he's, know. He had to have listened to a podcast. Oh before. sure. Yeah. Uh, listen. Open invitation to Ernie Hudson. Come on. Oh, hey, definitely. Definitely. If you run into him at a store, let him know. <laughs> don't bother Ernie Hudson. Bother him just or a at the, little or bit. Or depending on that picture, at the gym. Yeah. Oh, that, dude, that dude's lifting. Yeah. Jacked town. He's got um, a, probably a home gym from all that cameo money. That's a good point. <laughs> I will say. I uh, bought a Peloton. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, if you run into Ernie Hudson in his house, <laughs> please let him know he's welcome here. At any Congrats time. on your Peloton. <laughs> uh, the VHS Trailogram, as we all know, is a uh, buzz-in game wherein I will read out a series of clues uh, going from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 in point order. The first one to buzz in and guesses it correctly gets that point. Uh, if you buzz in incorrectly within that round, you are out for the round. Not much else to say here, folks. The winner oh. will get another uh, cameo, another shot at the VH- at the uh, WHM slush fund. And if Chris Cabin wins, if he which, goes, you, which he will, if he goes back to back, nothing but trouble yep. is going to be done on the show, which is totally in the absolutely never category. So we'll see. <laughs> right. And here's the thing, like a little like WHM behind the scenes for you listeners out there. The what I guess fans have dubbed the Hobbit vomit sound. Uh-huh. That's I do that, but I feel like we should record Steve <laughs> while he's watching it because he will be making the Hobbit. Oh, I, I just that might. movie is disgusting. And if I win the Pruder film episode, Ooh, I love it. it. Oh, yeah. that would be fucking awesome, right? Dude, a little, little nice Patreon bonus, bonus yeah. for the top tiers. WHM minis, dude. The Umbrella How? Man. What did we know, and when did we know it? How did they do three and a half hours? <laughs> on the Zapruder film. Well, when you we get could. Don DeLillo in studio, he's going to just have a lot of thoughts about it. What uh, did he do related to the Kennedy assassination? Oh, he, she was a second gunman. <laughs> oh! He writes wrote a, lot a book about, about it. it. Well, what was that called? Uh, Libra. Yes. Libra. Oh, and, I didn't uh, read that one. It's a it's a it's a praising tome of Lee Harvey Oswald. <laughs> the genius that was cut yeah. down too soon. Yeah. All right. So VHS trailer game. Lee Harvey Oswald is not playing, uh, but Eric is playing for his team. That's right. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Round one. Nice. Why not? Oh, are these all werewolf movies? No, this is just this is just a 1997-ish movies. Got it. Game Master's Clue. Here we go. A an 80s hard body does it up in this New Jersey set star-studded crime (gasps) drama. Andrew Dubin. Copland. It is Copland for five big points. Ooh, there we go. go. Now I'm on the board. Mm -hmm. See, take that, Gordon Ramsay, you fuck. I always remember um, Ray Liotta when he was promoting t- Copland. Must have had a shitty time with Sylvester Stallone on Conan. W- called him out. He's like, yeah, Stallone was just going around telling everybody it was for a movie. I was like, dude, you're really insecure about your body. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> dude, you're fucking burning him up. I love yeah, it. dude. I mean, this guy's taking out turkeys left and right. Sylvester Stallone, the Chantix turkey. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. Game Master's Clue. A monotone TV star tries to graduate to film lead as a morally conflicted doctor in this quote unquote smart and sexy thriller. That's from the trailer. Monotone. Monotone. A monotone TV wait, wait, wait. star. So a TV star that's just like, it's like Stephen Wright or something? <laughs> I, I won't say more, but you might be close. It's not, it's not Stephen Wright. A monotone TV star tries to graduate to film lead as a morally conflicted doctor in this quote unquote. Smart and sexy action thriller. That's from the trailer. They, they, they say it's smart. And so, sexy. quote unquote means it's wrong. <laughs> yeah. Smart and sexy action thriller. This one's probably the most obscure of the bunch, I will say. Uh, monotone. We are going to move TV on. Star. Okay, yeah. Uh, Tribune trivia. According to the Don Simpson autobiography, High Concept, the concept of this film was stolen from a doctor. Who died at Simpson's house before he could finish the script? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the circumstances yeah. of which I'd love to know, but I have a good idea. It involved his nose. According to the Domson, Don Simpson autobiography. I like how this is supposed to help. Him. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it was too good to pass up. Yeah, but I, yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty funny. This dude OD'd at his house. Uh, a hilarious. monotone TV star tries to graduate to film lead as a morally conflicted <sighs> doctor in this quote unquote smart and sexy action thriller. According to Dom Simpson, 
It's an autobiography, high concept. The concept of the film was stolen from a doctor who died at Simpson's house before he could finish. So he trip. stole. Oh, Chris Cabin. Playing God. It is playing God what for four fuck? points to Chris Cabot. What is that? Who's the monotone? David guy? Duchovny. David Duchovny. Oh. Hi, Scully. Oh, I was thinking Schwimmer God. in my head. Ooh, that's I was thinking Schwimmer in, but it's on an action thriller that um, Schwimmer was in that Breast Men movie. Oh God, oh, I yeah, barely yeah, yeah. remember it's that. It's him and uh, wow. adaptation. Oh, Nazi the? father from American Beauty. Chris Cooper. Yeah. Ooh, I'd like <laughs> yes. to get my hands on that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so four big points to Chris Cabin. Two more rounds to go here. Aye, aye, aye. All right. <clears throat> Game Master's Clue. Mm. This multiple Academy Award winning film mm. was a breakthrough for a couple of young hunks that are reteaming in a high profile film this year. <gasps> Andrew Jupin. Goodwill Hunting. It is Goodwill wow. Hunting. Big one. Yeah, the, oh, yeah. the hunks are back in town, yeah, man, with, yeah. with the last duel. With Eve. Eve or no Jodie Comer? So I yeah, don't think she of either. killing Eve. Yeah, oh, I saw it was kind of funny. I saw like a TV ad for that movie the other day, and it was on mute. And Matt Damon was just like beating somebody up, and I was kind of laughing. Well, I, I want to. They're keeping Affleck out of those trailers, and I'm kind of curious why. I think it's those. Doesn't he have like fucked up contacts in that movie? They all look stupid as hell. They do because the yeah. first trailer definitely had Damon in it. Yes, yeah, so Adam the Driver just looks like Adam Driver. Yeah, that, Damon's mean, got like a fucking wrestling mullet in that movie. He definitely does, which is part of the reason I was laughing at him <laughs> beating that guy up. <laughs> looks like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> he does. All right, last round, folks. <clears throat> Game Master's Clue. A previous episode. Mm. The trailer for this mega hit has two characters running through potential suspects. Hint, this movie shares something in common with the movie we're reviewing today. So it's a werewolf movie. Uh, it's something in common. I don't know. <clears throat> a previous episode, the trailer for this mega hit has two characters running through potential suspects. Hint, this movie shares something in common with the movie we're reviewing today. <laughs> Andrew Rubin. Dead Man on Campus? It is not. Yeah. Dead we didn't do that. Never done that. What? We didn't do Never that. Never done movie. that. Oh, it's a previous episode and it has something. Oh, yeah, well, that's the outback that's committing it. suicide. So he's, out, he's out. Um, Looks like it's suicide again for me. Uh, previous episode, the trailer for this mega hit has two characters running through potential suspects. I'll say in a diner. I don't know if that helps. Hint, this movie shares something in common with the movie we're reviewing today. Uh, and now... Incorrect mm. trivia. IMDb has its tr as trivia. <laughs> Something about this trivia is incorrect, but it is also a clue in and of itself. And it's going to make Andrew Jupin scream. Laurie Metcalf and Jerry O'Connell play mother. mother fucking fuck. Laurie Metcalf and Jerry O'Connell also play mother and son. Oh, I, oh shit. Yeah. It's, it, it, I think we're going to do coin flip. I did, I, did, you, did you see Andrew? It was, you it was, it was exactly at the same time. <laughs> All right, we've never we never had this before. Double right. buzz, Ooh, folks. And I know who I know. That you guys are going to get anyone got a coin? I don't mm. have change around here. Okay. Uh, Can we uh, break off a piece of wood to flip or something? <laughs> All right. I'm thinking of a number. Ooh, I like this. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right. I'm thinking of a number between one and 50. Five. Chris Cabin. 22. Chris Cabin wins. I was there thinking of 47. Scream okay. 2. It is Scream yeah. 2. Ah, so that's what scream I was going to say. Yeah, but the incorrect trivia was that Laurie Metcalf and Jerry O'Connell also play mother and son in The Big Bang Theory Season 11. They don't play mother and son in Scream 2. Laurie Metcalf is Billy Loomis's mother. That's correct. Yeah, so what's so the connection with this movie again? It's a, it's a horror sequel, my friend. Oh, okay. oh wow. Jesus, Jesus fucking what? Christ. It's a, a fucking horror sequel. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I guess, Steve... <laughs> That's the VHS trailer game. Ba -da 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 Keep going, Steve. Come on. <laughs> we should get a little like game show tune made well, up. Huh? Yeah, if, so, if somebody wants to send me a, a, an outro to the VHS trailer game, we all hate movies at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. You might be on this show for no money at all. The <laughs> only winning move is not to play the game. <laughs> The Man, I got taken to the woodshed. You did, but you know, it's, it's, it's a long season, my friend. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're in we're in fucking October, man. We got Plenty all the time. way to oh, August, but now I got the stench of failure on me. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to shake. Oh, terrible! You're in second place. <laughs> no, this guy's got to use yeah, me he, by he now. Probably, he probably, yeah, he probably one. did. Right? Didn't you have fifteen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andrew came out of nowhere. That's yeah. You're probably oh, tied yeah. with yeah. Okay. We don't, I don't have the numbers. Sure. Of, anywho, <laughs> this is a movie that should have never been made. Speaking of, speaking Absolutely. of shit that never should have been made. What were they thinking? 
16 mm. years, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah. It's, you know what? This movie reminds me a lot of Scream, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, dude? Right, right into the mailbag with your complaint. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I think we're all in agreement That's, here that that was a bit of a flub. <laughs> no, I was, I was thinking Paris. I was thinking. Anyway. Apparently, I was thinking Tom Everett Scott. <laughs> fucking idiot move there. I, I'm going to get yelled at, but I'm with you, Steve. Thank you. Here's Thank a good you. place to start. This movie is a great example. And I mean, there's other examples, but this is a great example of how fantastic of a director Tom Hanks is. Mm. Because Tom Everett Scott is great in that thing you do. Mm -hmm. Tom Everett Scott, not so great in this movie. No. And this movie came out after that thing you do. The yes. oh, character they have him playing, though. I mean, the script, it's I can't really not blame all his him. fault, but just Ooh. like this performance that is made with help of this director and this yeah. screenplay, it's fucking terrible. I, I call that movie that thing I don't remember. <laughs> really? I saw it once. I wow, couldn't I've tell you once. Couldn't tell you like a lick about it. TBS TNT all the time. It's probably one. on right now. Yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> the, I've seen that movie like twenty times. Wow. Yeah, I've, I yeah. definitely wore out a VHS tape of that at least once. I think it's a legitimately great movie. It's you really guys, good. you guys love this thing. I huh? do. I mean, it's not American like, Werewolf in Paris. It's about like a little pop group doing their little songs. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. one-hit wonder. It's about the one-hit wonder. The O'Neaters. Yes. <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> <laughs> the way they call themselves the Wonders, but the way they spell it is O-N-E-D-E-R-S, and everybody keeps saying O'Neaters. Oh, joke. that's why they didn't take off. Yeah. yeah. Well, they cha Tom Hanks' character in the film is like, well, don't be stupid. Change that. What, what's kind of weird about that movie is at least it feels a little bit like Tom Hanks is like, hey, you know who's going to be the next Tom Hanks? Mm -hmm. This Tom Everett Scott. You <laughs> Hollywood be on notice. Yep. Here comes the new. Because he had a similar energy, big curly hair kind of a thing. I like, think if they were farther apart in age. Yes. So if like if Tom Everett Scott was like in his 20s now. Yeah. He's like 51, I think. But like if he was in his 20s now, he could play Tom Hanks in like a Tom Hanks biopic. <laughs> yes, exactly. Or maybe like we went if he was if he was t in his 20s, like 20 years from now, we do a Tom Hanks biopic. Tom Everett Scott could have played. When, you're totally is, right. Isn't he humongous? Yeah, he's like six something. He's, he's super tall. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, so they could like sh digitally shrink him or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but De like deheightify him. A Tom Hanks movie would just be like, and then I was successful again. <laughs> and then I was successful again. And then, then I had that one son who was a little fishy about vaccine information. Yeah. Oh, right. Colin. Chet. Chet, no. Chet is the bad one. Okay. The, bad one. <laughs> the, the evil, evil one. Yeah, yeah. I think he's just the embarrassment. Well, well, that would mean that Colin was locked up in the cellar eating fish eggs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It feels like the yeah. note, just to get back to America Werewolf, like, sure. The, the note that I felt in every scene was the director just saying, hurry up. <laughs> hurry up like everything feels like it's in fast forward mode in this movie because well, it's like yeah. why, why bother making it a sequel to a class like i actually don't even think actually making a sequel to american werewolf in london 15 16 years later in the that, 90s yeah. is the worst idea in the universe no but you just have to care about it you have to care that it's actually a sequel to a movie and not like filled with the references or anything like that but like Make it thematically, make the world, and also like the coolest thing about American Werewolf in London, or one of the cooler things about it is the mythology is really cool, like how it works. And they yep. actually change that drastically in this movie. So it's like, who gives a shit? Yeah, that mythology change is really stupid. And also, like, I don't need all these friends. No, like it worked so much better as the back and forth between yeah. two people. That's what's fucking hilarious. I, I think I said it in the text thread last night, it just goes to show you how nothing these characters are because I, I think I say it at the end of the single white female episode, like I I thought that this movie was Tom Everett Scott, Julie Delpy, and one other guy. And I was nope. blown away that there's two guys. It's well, the two, well, it would be nice if one of these guys was somebody. Mm -hmm. it would, that would <laughs> yeah. be, I mean, the, look, the one guy looks great with his shirt off sure. and just do some parkour shit. Uh, that's all good and well. <laughs> but like, I need some other like anchoring presence. Even the mm -hmm. villain guy is a fucking nobody. He's a nothing. He looks like Andre Agassi to the point he where does. I'm like, was Andre Agassi in this movie? <laughs> oh was my God, he totally if he, does. If Andre Agassi if he was fighting a wicked skag habit. <laughs> I mean, this guy is not looking good. No. Oh man. Yeah, we, the, the villain Claude. Oh great. Uh, God damn the, it. And like the, 
it starts with this really pompous score to like the fucking pop music, baby. Like when this movie, there's one music drop in this movie, and I'm like, oh fucking yeah, and mouth, Bush's mouth when they're but, fucking on the grave. Oh, I'm like, your yeah. mental armor. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, my mental my mental mental. Mental. God. God. Wow. It's so good. Wow. But, but in the original film, you had like 50s music and shit, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then yeah. now we have music of the era. I, and I, like, I guess like, you know, in in London, it's all like the moon songs stuff. with moon in the title. Yeah. And I guess with mouth, it's like wolf bites. But like, nah. that's as far as you could argue no. it. No, you need you need to do you need to carry that over i think yeah. oh, yep. oh, so what are we doing here just f fucking recycle some songs no one's going to complain about some ccr but i do understand that because that was the attitude of the time is have a big soundtrack yeah have a romeo plus juliet soundtrack music have inspired a, by yeah, and yeah, featured yeah. in the <laughs> major motion picture american werewolf in paris but yes. we're literally talking about one song what no, there was song? others there's the other stuff but it was shit no was that's shit. that's what i'm saying though i do remember it was a thing where i think it was when this movie actually maybe came out on VHS when it was like, be sure to pick up the soundtrack yeah. on whatever the fuck records. Right? Ask your mom to take you to Coconuts. Yeah, yeah totally. Some like stabbing westward kind of garbage it's is what you're all getting. all awful. Yes. It's every other fucking song in this movie is terrible. Um, it's Yeah, we've got Mouth by Bush. Uh, the refreshments are on here. Better than Ezra was here somewhere. I miss that tune. There's Normal a, a, Town, I think. There's a, a cover of, Kate, of Never Gonna Give You Up by Cake, but that's in the credits, which kind of sucks It doesn't shit. count, and it's yes. a fucking great cover, yes. but it does not count. Hmm. It's the ass end of the credits. There's Fastball, Skinny Puppy. Skinny uh, Puppy? What song? Uh, skinny Puppy is uh, Hard it. Set Head. Huh. I, you, you, you got me. Or oh, it might be a... Yeah, that's I, I like Wait, Skinny Puppy. What are we doing with the fastball? The way? No, it's some. It's another fastball song. That's all yeah. you need to know. Human Touch. Uh, <laughs> you got the touch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they should have just put that song on here. <laughs> and I mean, like, I, again, I don't want you to recycle like two guys are walk into the wrong bar. But I mean, like, the beginning of that movie, the first twenty five minutes is untouchable. Absolutely it's like unfucking touchable. And this movie, it's just like. I'm uh, Sakura Blue. I'm running away from a werewolf who is going to get me. Who knows who I am? You probably won't even know at the end yes. of the movie. Also, you <laughs> open the first one with these bucolic shots of the yes. fucking like hillside. Yep. This movie looks like shit. Well, that, that's a good point. Like, why are we immediately Paris? Like, why don't we fucking go somewhere and then go to Paris? Yes. That I mean, yeah, if you're keeping true to the format yeah. of the first film, that's exactly I right. Mean, yeah. And why do all the camera movements have to be like mousetrap fucking like Swirl down here and down to a rainy fucking gutter. Because bad directors think that shit looks cool. Yes. <laughs> and you know they think it looks cool? Werewolf cam. Oh, Look yeah. out, folks. Yeah. Werewolf cam. You can fucking suck it with your doom POV shit. <laughs> Don't you love burnt yellows? Suck it with POV. Was this my search history? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> don't you want to see film that looks like it's been pissed on and then soaking in piss for many days? What is this, my search history? <laughs> yes. The piss. werewolf cam really does bother. It just it does. looks so fucking bad. That, that's all this movie has, though. That's like this movie's move is like, well, the werewolves look like shit. Our leads don't like each other. What are we? Cut to werewolf cam, folks. <laughs> no. Holy moly, man. You know, uh, I'd rather the werewolf cam than see these fucking things, these cartoon uh, characters uh, that are birthed what? later in the film. <laughs> and like, it's so bad. they all look like, this is a weird reference for me to make, but because of like their scrawniness and like the hair is very thin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Growing up, I had a hamster that lived longer than any hamster ever deserved to live. Where hamster? He could have been, dude. And by the time Fuzzbucket checked out, that was his name. I'll be taking child. that, Mr. Master Jupin. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, the hamster man. Come to get your hamster. Oh, looks like your hamster's been left out in the sun too long. Like, it. he was just like emaciated. Ugh. His hair was very thin. He was an old ass hamster. <laughs> yeah. Hamster chemo? Or? <laughs> no, this was the hamster that died and then my parents told me uh. that my dad buried it in the woods, but in reality he threw, threw it over the wall that divided <laughs> our backyard from the highway we lived behind. <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Jupiter, here's my son Bertram. I've been teaching him since he was a baby to eat dead hamsters. Open up, Bertram. <laughs> <laughs> but it just they look like disgusting dying creatures. Whereas 
the fucking werewolves in London are very full, monstrous yeah. looking beasts, very big hairy, hairy yeah. big mm-hmm. wolf the manes. Fur. They have fur. Well, yeah. I, I guess what this movie was trying to do was like, oh, you know, the, the cool part is when in the not the, the only cool, but when in the transformation scene, the, the iconic transformation scene, when it's like that like sort of half transformation, it looks closer to that. That it does mm. the final. Yeah. yeah, they're not all the way there. Maybe yeah. it's because we started trimming pubes in the That's mid a good to late point. 90s. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So now, yeah. now werewolves <laughs> trim and trim their Boy hair. Boy there, werewolf, tidy up that bush. <laughs> Looking for cropped werewolves. We, are, we don't want any long hairs. <laughs> we don't have it in the budget to make werewolf merkins, all right? Oh, oh, <laughs> so you, you werewolves better have full bush. Oh, are you Jimmy Page? You need all that hair? <laughs> Hot, shiny werewolves. Oh, just <laughs> slick, Glistening. hairless werewolves. What is this, my search history? <laughs> God, I, this is the worst joke ever, but I'm going to keep doing it. Go for it, man. I So, yeah, this, <sighs> ra- this random dude just gets murdered. Like, and it's like a thing where like we're... we're um, Hiding it from the audience, what's happening? Yep. And it's like which is, yes, the which sewer is mis- who ate Paris, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is a mistake because I, you know, I was watching this movie earlier today. I didn't remember it, even though I watched it during lockdown, which but was not that long ago. But yeah, I mean, but that's a testament to this movie. Dude. Yeah, of course you didn't remember it. Yeah, so I was just like, wait, okay, he had like a lab coat. I was like, okay, so the werewolf experiments are getting at her. We'll check in with him later, and then I totally. <laughs> Didn't remember. I totally forgot about the scene completely. And then I was like, oh, shit, that's supposed to be like the stepdad that's tied up in yeah, the basement. basement. Yeah. yeah. Which is like, whatever, man. That's a listen. Uh, I'll say it right now. Double amputee werewolf. Only cool part of this movie. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. That's, that's it. I want his story. It's an actual suit, though. Like, yeah, he, exactly. it's not CGI. That's the whole thing. Yep. Just do that. Yep. I also like this cab driver who's like. Thinking about helping this guy, but when the sewer eats him, he's like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, man, I love seeing this dude turn tail. It's like, oh, I'll help my fellow man. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't want to be eaten by a grate. Uh, but and then it's like, as soon as this dude gets pulled under the sewer grate, cue the fucking fart rock. And here we go. Three American douchebags <laughs> oh, in Paris. <sighs> they're on. They're on. They're taking a, uh, a rail to Paris. They're they're working their way. And I mean, like. They're working their way through uh, Europe, and they're doing the Daredevil tour, and that's they've right. got T-shirts made up, guys. Dude, this that's is right. pathetic. I, I'm not a fan of. Let's make the custom T-shirt for the thing we're doing right nope. now. Nope. Nope. So that includes bachelor and bachelorette parties with mm-hmm. custom T-shirts. Uh, uh, fucking family vacations mm-hmm. where where you got seventeen <laughs> white people all wearing the same t shirt. What, what does that say? What does that? It's a, you know say? like stop the steal or uh, <laughs> oh, well yeah because oftentimes you know what it is a lot of the time it's like if if a big family crew goes to like a place like Disney World or right. something yeah. you all wear the matching t shirt. It's usually like a loud garish so you fucking don't neon get separate. Yeah, exactly, and it's always got some cutesy fucking message on yeah. it. It's usually yeah. like. A portmanteau made up of like the family yeah. last yeah. name or whatever. I just want to fucking throw up when Couldn't I see that. Couldn't be me, shit. dude. Yeah, no thanks. That's, yeah. that's right, dudes. We're doing the Daredevil tour. We're going to blind ourselves and then try to find our senses again and become superheroes. <laughs> that's what we're going to do, folks. Let's we, get it. Uh, dude, we're going to fuck Michael Clark Duncan <laughs> up, brother. Yeah, but first, you got to pass the bar exam, man. <laughs> All right, man. Whoever can free Coolio on that murder rap first drinks free all wait, night. Wait, which country's bulls are I supposed to be from? We're going to go there next. <laughs> all right, dudes. I canceled the hotel reservations. We're all sleeping in concrete sensory deprivation pools. Let's do it. All yeah. right, folks. Let's find an old man named Stick. <laughs> Totally sucked when we did the actual Daredevil tour in Hell's Kitchen. It's like three blocks, and it, it <laughs> yeah. smells kind of weird, and there's like two bars. That's it. I love how... Um, I was thinking about this the other day for some reason. In the Sony and the PlayStation, um, Sp- like the newer yeah. Spider-Man game, yeah. <laughs> they consider like the entire top part of Manhattan to just be Harlem. Yeah. <laughs> If they ever made a Daredevil game, the way that the Netflix show treats it, every fucking square inch of Manhattan would be Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> it's so, they act like it's the biggest fucking neighborhood. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're, they're just, um, it's these three dudes. I think it's Chris, who's the hunk. 
Yep. Uh, Brad, who's like just, I guess he's supposed to be the closest to the Griffin Dunn kind of yeah. yes. wacky character. Yes. You know, which if, the thing he's got, he doesn't have the looks. He doesn't have the fucking talent. He doesn't have the fucking lines. When, <laughs> once he comes back as a ghost, I'm like, him? <laughs> uh, and then there's Andy, played by Tom Everett Scott, who is your... <laughs> Who just is? Just, I don't know. He's like cribbing from Ethan Embry's fucking shit. Like this, like tall, awkward, nice guy, harsh shit. The funny Fuck thing off. is, the reason why Ethan Embry was able to excel in all, and I think Ethan Embry's a great guy. Sure, he's actually a pretty decent Twitter follow. Oh, really? Um, yeah. you know, just I've always liked stuff that he's into, but like, stop the stealer. Yeah, it's a good, no. good <laughs> politics or what? Very, very political, but you know, Ethan um, Embry in January six. <laughs> <laughs> I but kid. I think part of it, the appeal, was his stature. Sure, but yeah. you got this big Frankenstein motherfucker <laughs> in Tom Everett Scott. It yeah. doesn't work the same way. And I didn't realize. Oh, that's interesting. Both of them in uh, that, thing, that you thing you do. Doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't realize how tall he was though until this movie because they're doing. I think I was making fun of this. It might not be out yet. I was having a good time with the tall actress on the upcoming uh, Once in a Lifetime episode uh, yes. on oh, Devil's right. Diary. Yeah. Yes. They're doing a lot of the same shit where Tom Everett Scott has to be either walking a few paces ahead or a few paces behind well, of the other guys to make the height that balance. And Julie Delpy isn't exactly Hakeem Olajuwon either. Like, she's not no, that tall. No, definitely not. Well, that's actually what I, I, I didn't think of his height at all except for I I saw La La Land and yeah. he's at the end and like Emma Stone looks like she's standing in his palm which is oh, weird because right? he's also like 30 years old it's like she's yeah. going out with her oh, dad yeah. in that movie. <laughs> that's very weird uh, yeah. but so, yeah so yeah. Andy is behind in all the Daredevil points and it has yet to be on the board with the sex points sex points and there's yes. the yes. argument the sex argument points. over like whether or not the sex points and the Daredevil points were being tallied. Mm. Is this where you got the, the idea total. for the VHS trailer? <laughs> yes, exactly, man. <laughs> so I was sitting around watching my favorite horror sequel. <laughs> it's a fucking horror sequel. You, I'm sorry. You know what? It, it is, but it doesn't <laughs> seem it, like it's not a fat two. It's yeah. hard to pick up. That, no, no, uh, but I do think, I mean, like, so my question is, how do the sex points work? How do you verify? I mean, like. You want to talk about some, you know, some some collusion, Eric? That's oh man, me and that, me and that chick totally hooked up. But I mean, like, is it just sex? Are we doing hand stuff? So I feel stuff? that's if they if they had the breakdown of what mm. was going on, it's like oh, you know, four points for a hey J. Yeah, gotcha. You know, ten Ooh. for a beach, fifty if you have intercourse, one hundred if it's anal. Only ten for a beach. It seems Brad, like it should be a little higher. Brad's really <laughs> pushing for like a single point for every country you jerk off in. <laughs> Uh, it's still counts, dude. Someone is orgasming, and that person is me, and I should get a point for that. I, I just laid, want to be on the board, buddy. I laid my seed all across Europe. Also, when you're talking about shit like this, I need some kind of like catch up of all the daredevil. Sure, that'd like, be fun. What are we doing? Uh, and what does that even mean? It, it, it cannot be as intense as well, what the mean? fuck. There's just no fucking way. Unless they were <sighs> literally surfing a tsunami. But what is this 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 whole daredevil shit? It's like the X Games and skateboarding just got invented and everyone was so excited. <laughs> Dan Cortez was America's sweetheart. This so. Chris it's crazy. This Chris kid gives me Dan Cortez vibes. He definitely yeah. does, actually. That's a good call. But like I need, yeah, I need some line about like and and here's a thing that you could fucking do where it's like, oh, well, remember when we were in London? Like just just yeah. say say the name London. Just <laughs> fucking fucking say it. Remember, man, we blew up Big Ben. <laughs> <laughs> or, and I mean, look, I also need to know what the prize is. Is it a hundred bucks? Is it a thousand bucks? Is it, Yeah. Uh, also, what some is... Some Chevy Corvette or something? <laughs> what is the, um... Oh, I had another question about all this fucking dumb shit. Oh, what is the whole deal? Like, is it tough to travel around with that much bungee cord on your person i guess i mean I, well that plus the clamps and the what do you call it there the the carabiners all mm. that you need some heavy duty duty carabiners yeah it looks like he ousted all of his fucking like boxers and shirts for this bungee cord yeah, yeah i brought no change of undies man <laughs> but i got fucking 100 feet of bungee it, well, that's a great question yeah. was he was he carrying that around all like cause this when like either the middle end or like the the last legs of this tour so is he just like everything yo man 
man. Can I buy some deodorant? Nope, you can't. Bungee cords in there, man. <laughs> I've been smelling like shit this entire vacation, and I will tell you why when we get to Paris. I'll tell you who bustank my bustank. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really just a criminal thing, right? Like we're going to all these countries breaking into monuments. I guess and so. jumping off of them, I guess. Yeah, you're right though. I, I would love to know what else they did. Was did they like bungee from? Are they bungee and everyone? Are they bungee off the, the Leaning Tower of Pisa? Yeah, I don't think maybe. you could do that, dude. You pull it right down, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you bungee off the other side of it. You straighten it back up, Show like them Superman going off a bridge somewhere. Yes. Honestly, I think they should have. Someone should have been bitten. On one of these things that isn't yep. a romantic, like this is like we meet the girl and this is sort of sets it off, but yeah, having her being being a werewolf, I don't know. Yeah, because he just they, we, we, Tom Everett Scott's way behind. He's like, don't worry, guys. When we get to Paris, you're gonna be eating your own shorts. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> I am very regular and I'm acting in a movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> yep. I love playing a jazz drummer <laughs> who makes it big on the rock scene and now I'm going to play a guy who turns into a werewolf. Could I get one hamburger sandwich please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just on that. fucking Wonder Bread no cheese. Also why not have a fucking werewolf scene with one of these extreme sports things put together? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Like what about a werewolf a... bungee jump? Thank <laughs> you. Exactly. A werewolf bungee jump. Teen Wolf 3. So he's yeah. going they get to Paris we're immediately, uh, we sneak into the Eiffel Tower. It's very much the opening to uh, Superman 2 when Lois Lane gets stuck in the Eiffel Tower. As every, everybody knows that. Absolutely. 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 Everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. Everyone, everyone's 40 years old, right? <laughs> um, but um, she, uh, they they go up and they're like, eh, they're like they think he's not going to do it. They're like, yo, dude. Because I would be like, yo, dude, are you trying to kill yourself right now? Like literally trying to, I don't want to be in a murder beef. I don't want to be fucking Go, to, answering to the Paris police why my friend is dead and hanging from a bungee cord. Yeah, sure. Also, you have to stop pretending that it's this easy to just break into the Eiffel Tower once it's closed. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's why the bridge thing makes so much more sense. Yes, You'll yes. see those people climbing the Brooklyn Bridge and shit sometimes. Yep, absolutely. And you shouldn't bungee jump off someone's husband because, as we know, a woman is married to the Eiffel Tower. That's and true. Oh, that's unfair. Right. That's a, so that's like a threesome, unconsensual. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. She would have a lot to say about it. They're still wed to this day, you think? I, I hope so. Do you There's, think the Eiffel Tower had to sign a prenup? Did the French courts <laughs> recognize this? I don't it? think so. No. So this was a, do- folks at home, this is a documentary yes, on, uh, it's about on YouTube. sex it's the, freaks. It's on YouTube. I'm yeah. married to the Eiffel Tower. It's 25 I, to 30 minutes. You'll have a great time. I just think they should have interviewed the Eiffel Tower for it. <laughs> he wasn't man enough. <laughs> he couldn't pleasure a lady of my stature. Hey man, come on, stop, stop tired of bungee jump. My my wife isn't here. Come, ah, come on, I, <laughs> my wife isn't here. Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, it's just yeah. I don't know. It would make way more fucking sense if it's a bridge. And you know what they have in Paris? Bridges. And like, I get yeah. it. It's a movie you want to. You know, use a fucking monument. Yes. This. Also, like, even in London, they, they begin in a place where there might be woods. Yes. Yep. What woods the fuck is in <laughs> Paris? What no. the fuck? Like, you can't hide it. Like, to me, werewolves are just, uh, that's part of the mythos is that you are in not really near a, the woods. Not really a metropolitan monster. No, mm. not really. Yeah. Where is he hiding? Well, and that's the dumb thing of this movie is the way they're making it like sequelified and cool for the 90s is like it's a hip fucking underground enclave of werewolves that all love fucking techno music. Yep. yep. And also werewolf skag, <laughs> as we'll get to. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. But, but also, also they're like, making it kind of a sequel, right? Because she's supposed to be descended from the original let's talk cast. about it because let's just get it out of the way because i don't believe this it's, it's not written, in the movie it's not it's in the, movie. Written it's not in the, the movie. wikipedia yes. plot description yes. apparently it's on the trivia yeah that she's supposed to be the daughter of david from the first movie and the nurse lady yes that that's what people are telling me and maybe and maybe that was in one of the many drafts it's not in this movie like when we see her ghost mother for four seconds which makes Zero sense. Yeah. Um, yep. And that everyone could see her. Um, the uh, what do you call it there? She she has a British accent, so I guess that's it. <sighs> yeah, I but you know what? Guess. Just do flashbacks. Cut up that first movie. I know it'll look stupid and shitty, but if you really want that to be there, you have to really but, spell it out for no, me. No, but it had to be like this. Per whoever wrote that, like 
was at some fucking screening with John Landis, and it was like, Mr. Landis, is it at all possible that David and the nurse had a daughter and she was now a new werewolf? And he said, yeah, whatever, you fucking kid. I have to go murder somebody else. I think I think they reached that conclusion only because in the scene where the mother appears, and by the way, I think it, it does track to the logic of these movies because Julie Delpy and Tom Everett Scott are who see... The ghost of the mother, and at that point, they are both werewolves, and she has just been recently murdered. But also, she's clearly English. Yeah. Like, she's speaking English with an English accent, and she's dressed in a nurse's outfit. And that's that's See, all they're that's, doing. This is, I bet you the first draft had a lot more of it, and that's why the original alternate, which is now an alternate ending, of where they actually have a baby together and it has werewolf eyes. Yes. That I makes guess sense. That, that makes, that would, I guess that would make sense. Yeah. I, I don't know. But I mean, all it is is you're looking at this zombie with like a nurse's cap on and she has a British I, accent that, and that's it. And that scene is so brief. He jumps out the fucking window. Dude, hilarious. And somehow it doesn't get a scratch, but it, you, you, you don't dwell on it at all. The comedy is so aggressive in this movie. Yeah. Like they just push it really hard where the first one, they're like, here's a couple jokes. Here's like yes. an, an interesting delivery or something. Yeah. Yes. Like this needs to have some kind like, you know what? It should be like, Julie Delpy's here before Moonrise. Mm-hmm. That's just what you like call a, this movie. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, a little yeah. quiet, like some pacing for crying this out loud. That's, that's, that's what, what the she, weirdest yeah. part is. She was in all those other werewolf movies, and I don't know why <laughs> uh-huh. she's in all these. She's in four French werewolf movies. Mm-hmm. Before sunrise, before sunrise, before yeah. moon. Yeah, they're, they're this all, is part of them. Yeah, they're yeah. all they're all it's in the, the extended. And the universe. last one, a werewolf in Greece. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's just two werewolves, like middle of the night, just walking and talking, and like on the. The bank of the Seine, just having like I'm philosophical conversations. Yeah, talking about like what, well, you know, now that we're werewolves, where does our soul really go when we die? That's know? right. And you know what? Way better movie than this. Yeah. So are we like in Satan's service? Did I lose my soul? Like what's going to happen to me? <laughs> oh, are you, oh, you're doing the, th- I thought you meant like as podcast. Like <laughs> in general, yes. Yeah. Oh, we're definitely in Satan's service. Yeah, definitely. Talking about it. Have you read any D.H. Lawrence? <laughs> he talks about the eroticism of the body. <laughs> and I think that could be with werewolves as well. You know, I'm uh, pretty certain by having these two kids, we ruined our lives. Let's talk about that for another hundred minutes. <laughs> but first, let's uh, get some bright, garish T-shirts for this vacation. <laughs> for those of our kids. I want to fuck other werewolves, okay? Uh, <laughs> or you could go full in gladder and you do a werewolf movie and it's every, you film it every year for I like uh, that the idea. summer. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Where boyhood possible? Wolfhood. Wolfhood, wolfhood is yeah, the where. That's the number. Um, but the bad news wolves. She, uh, Tom Everett Scott is about to bungee jump, but then Julie Delpy shows up. And is about to kill herself jumping off the Eiffel Tower. And again, another person who is just like hidden out somewhere, I guess, in the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. What is the fucking security guard situation at this place? (laughs) I guess they don't have them. It's fucking crazy. And by the way, you see someone killing them. Let them fucking do it. I know. I know that sounds bad, but there's a perfect stranger. He doesn't know this woman. Also, Also, if he let her jump. You're not turning into a exactly. werewolf Exactly. By the logic of the first movie, she should jump. Zotolo, Henry, the security guard is having an affair again. <laughs> and that's another thing that drives me up the wall about this movie is the first movie had that cool cynicism to it where this is like, well, actually, you can cure it and that's live horse, forever and be shit. happy. Uh, yep. Fuck you, that. You're, you you're can't totally be right. happy anymore after you got bit by a werewolf. werewolf. That's the point of a werewolf movie. It's about yeah. an irreparable change to your body that yep. will that you have to live with forever. Either you figure out a way to lock it's, yourself up or you're dead. It's a curse. Yep. Yeah. They just said, like, let's just do it vampires. So you have to kill the head vampire, which is the head werewolf, mm-hmm. and now you're free. Yep. Okay. That's it's it. bullshit. It's, but, it's worship. But there's also just the shit on top of that shit, though, where, like, Julie Delpy is a doctor who has been trying to engineer a cure for lycanthropy, but it blew up in her face and it becomes like a serum that makes you change regardless. I had the cure for werewolfism and I lost it. (laughs) I did the fucking reverse. Now we're turning into werewolves. It had something to do with ants. I don't really remember. (laughs) Then Lorraine Bracco's just yelling at her. Dude, 
Sean Connery in a mm. werewolf movie, an American oh. werewolf in Scotland. Mm. You'd save a lot of money on your special effects. I was hairy as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Well, I took my shirt off and now I'm a werewolf. He, he would have to be like the king of the werewolves. Yes. Like get him in oh. like the first scenes in The Rock like Ooh, look yeah. with the long hair yep. at Quick. the end of a table. Everyone's calling him Silver Wolf. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> Lord. Lord Silverwolf. Ooh, <laughs> man. Fuck. Who's, yeah. uh, who's on the werewolf side in them their underworld movies? That's Scott Stapp. Uh, Scott, Scott Speedman. Yeah, okay, okay. And uh, Michael Sheen. <laughs> is oh, the Michael big, Sheen's a werewolf. Yeah. Uh, so Bill Nye, he's a vampire in that I movie? I believe so. Got it. Big uh, mistake. Should have flipped that shit. Mm-hmm. Scott Stapp, man. You wish. <laughs> I mean, he looks like Scott Stapp in that movie because he's got a similar haircut. Mm. Anyway, she's about to jump off, and he's like, oh, no, wait. And he... Oh, no, he, don't do it. I want to die. He jumps off because he's got the bungee cord, but he forgot to secure it. So you're just committing suicide yep. now, too, yep. yes. for a blonde lady you never met. I'd yep. be like, yeah. oh. That's a shame. Well, well, this could be part of my sex points. Because <laughs> he's such a nice guy. But and oh, when oh. we jumped off the Eiffel Tower together and I saved her, she actually touched my dick 200 <laughs> sex points. All right, we have the masturbation rules all done with. How about killing yourself for a piece of ass? How many? Is that a thousand? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, oh, fuck. Oh, uh, damn it. Nothing. Uh, I'm going to throw this out here right now because yeah. I want to get it out of the way, and it because it may it actively makes this scene somehow even worse is when we find out that her father, her stepfather, gave her a, a depressant yeah. to try to repress the werewolfism. Yes, yeah. so her committing suicide is a byproduct of that depression. <laughs> That's a really good point. And not actually her thinking, I'm a werewolf, let's end it. That's a good point. It's, or, or just thinking you want to end it to, all together. The fact that she's taking these experimental drugs that are beckoning her to kill herself. <laughs> yes. So are you saying then that this movie's making a statement about the French pharmaceutical industry? <laughs> I suppose do not so. Take, do <laughs> not take Chantix if you are uh, a werewolf or go, thinking about becoming a werewolf. Yeah, hasn't she just tried a run-of-the-mill SSRI or what? <laughs> Holy shit, I saw a fucking medical ad the other day because that's, man, the Americans' decision to, like, make it legal to put medical commercials on television, big mistake. I saw one the other day. It literally said that the biggest side effect was making your taint have lesions on it. Nice. What? Hold Whoa, on. Okay. They didn't hmm. say that, though. They they gave it the whatever the, the medical name for your taint Grundle. Is. So, so your taint has lesions on it. What is this, my search history? <laughs> <laughs> Quick question, actually, now they're talking about the Daredevil tour. Um, was David Carradine on a Daredevil tour himself? I think he, so. he, got a, he got a thousand Ooh. sex points. Yep. Uh-huh. Sadly, Ooh. it was the last one he ever got. One, one uh, jerk over the line. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet Mary. Mary. Yeah. But he, <laughs> his friends uh. hold on to the other end of the bungee cord. And the reason you don't bungee jump off the Eiffel Tower is it's fucking convex shape because you're that's not good for bungee jumping. No, it's definitely not. You need fucking flat all the way down. This makes absolutely no sense. He would no die sense. here. He oh, hits his head. You're decapitated. You're totally he hits decapitated. hits his head on this yep. metal beam. I you will know, say. Oh, when like cartoons become like accordions. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. That's what would have happened to Tom <laughs> Everett Scott. He <laughs> would have done an accordion. At least a few stars and birds yeah, circling please. around his head. And also, uh, as we know from uh, amazing Spider-Man lore, when he grabbed Julie Delpy's leg, he would have broke her neck because of the fucking. I mean, that's what happens in uh, uh, Spider Man with Gwen Stacy. But I mean, oh, right. But I mean, you'd break her leg at least. I mean, my God, just Wait, falling at whatever a, a thousand miles a second. I totally you forgot grab it. Amazing Spider Man. Andrew Garfield breaks Gwen Stacy's neck in that movie? Yes. No, she just, cracks her head at the bottom. Oh, okay. But no, in, in the comics, when oh, Spider Man, like, she's falling, he, yeah. he puts the web on her and it grabs her, like, Oh. Too too harshly as she's falling and it breaks her neck and it's a tragic That's thing. That's hilarious. Which would happen here though, or some like you something grab somebody as they're falling. You're gonna break their leg. It's not I, like, and yeah. now you're safe. Like that's not yeah. gonna happen. You well, rip yeah, her leg he, right he, off. He drops her perfectly down on the ground. Yes, and then he keeps the shoe. Fucking yeah, uh-huh. sicko. That's yeah, just, six points. Dude. You could have just dropped it right there. He's sniffing it all the way back up to the top. Dude. Absolutely. One big inhale. <laughs> I've pulled a head point. <laughs> yeah, he gets he gets hit by a beam, and again, yeah, he would be decapitated. And now is, or the, just- is is this part of like, oh, we're making an uh, American werewolf movie? 
we got to be in the hospital a bunch. Definitely. So here's a hospital scene. I think you're right. It is fucking hilarious that his face is all fucked up and bandaged, though. But oh, it's, it's don't a worry, quick... it's cured in 48 hours or yeah. whatever. This and is so fucking And dumb. that's pre-werewolf. It's, if he was a werewolf, yeah. it, like, oh, if she bit right. him and like he has Wolverine healing or whatever, like I would be like, okay, so then he survived. No, I mean, this dude's in the hospital for if he ever wakes up, which he wouldn't. Because they also don't, because they're totally unconcerned with, like, any kind of actual werewolf lore, doing anything with that at all. Because that's the cool thing about the first movie is they're like, oh, you were in that coma for three weeks, Mm -hmm. and now it's werewolf time again. Like, there's none of that. At least say, you know, between the time his fucking face is all bandaged up to when you're seeing him totally fine, like, oh, it's because you've been also in a coma for uh, such and such yeah. weeks. Oh, dude, your head fucking was inflated with so much trauma. You looked like fucking Big Face from Dick Tracy. <laughs> Negative five sex points for looking like Big Face. Your skull was in 37 separate pieces, bro. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Oh, man. You get all, you, and they even say, which is even, I think this is fucking crooked. It's crooked. More crooked than the VHS trailer game. Ooh. <laughs> They're like, yeah. That's pretty crooked. By They're the like, way, it's Steve has mentioned crooked and collusion. I didn't say jack shit I, about I that. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh man, you totally uh you, that was a crazy stunt, but since we helped you up, we get some of the points. I'm like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> is it is a part of this whole trip because it's like if we did this in America, we would go in debt. But <laughs> yeah. I can yeah. get a I can get a boo-boo on my head in yeah, France that's a good point. and yep. get it repaired and go about my business. I think you're right. Dude, Daredevil tour in socialized medicine countries, <laughs> brother man. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I think you're totally yeah. on to something there. It's like, oh yeah. Last year, the seniors in the frat house, they tried to do the Daredevil tour in America. They went bankrupt. We're going <laughs> to exactly. free jump off the Tate Modern, buddy. Let's go. <laughs> uh, he wakes up. He just has a bunch of bandages on his face, and that's cute or something. Yeah. And that, by the way, you know, you know, listeners in socialized medicine countries that are now being threatened to have that take away, that, this injury would cost you probably like 30 grand bare minimum. Easy. Yep. Yeah. Oh, dude, in, in the U.S. Oh, yep. yeah. Getting in a fucking ambulance costs a grand, dude. Yeah, yeah. At it's least, insane. at yeah. least a grand. Fun stuff. A um, thousand dollars to have some <laughs> pervert give me a ride. Maybe, <laughs> six, maybe six fifty if you live in the right neighborhood. That's a good point. Yeah, yes. <laughs> the other day, I took an Uber. Uh, I, I was trying to get an Uber. You're trying to was, get an ambulance. I was, <laughs> I was in Westchester trying to get an Uber, and then I, I, I usually try and get a cab if I can, but I, I couldn't see any. But then I saw a cab. I was in Westchester, grabbed the guy, and he's like, "Oh, what are you doing out here?" And I'm like, "Oh, you know, I'm just trying to get uh, go to a family dinner." He's like, "Huh." You're trying to get one of those Ubers? Like, yeah, like, yeah that are right out here. And I, I, you never know what you're going to get with those guys. Wally says you're never going to get with mm. what those guys. Yeah. My man has a jar of Vaseline mm. that he's putting you're all choking. over his own neck. Mm. And he's just like, you're never going to know what you're going to get with those Wait, whoa, guys. Whoa, what, what is La- lathering his neck with Vaseline. Did this, do, is there like lesions on his neck? I don't is there know, something I, that he was trying to... He tried to hang himself the night before. <laughs> I don't know. I have the dry neck. You know, it's uh, it's just disgusting. And then he was just like, yeah, none of them speak English either, Vaseline, <laughs> upon my own neck. Do you mind if I jerk <laughs> off in here? I got to, oh, I, I picked you up. I got 10 sex points for you. Uh, oh, hey, kid, there, I see a cop down the road. I need my hands on 10 and 2. You mind <laughs> leaning forward and put some more Vaseline and, on my neck? And if he pulls us over, you were driving, all right? We'll swap <laughs> spots real quick. This, hey, kid, you got any breath mints or what? This Vaseline jaws for the neck. I eat out of the other one. <laughs> but at least I'm speaking English. Oh, at least. I guess. <sighs> at the very least. That's insane. No, um, you tip that guy or what? No. I mean, I probably, I always tip everybody. See, the, no, now, you know, the, the, the United States is is romanticized to the rest of the world. This is what it's really like. <laughs> yeah. It's expensive. You can't, you can't, you can't get hurt or you'll go in bankrupt. And then you have to deal with these fellows. Oh, the Vaseline neck, dude. A man with a lubed up neck. Yeah. <laughs> man. Do you think, because, like, maybe he's constantly getting his head stuck and stuff. <laughs> so he needs, like, a good slippery neck to get back out. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> he's trying to avoid the hangman's noose. <laughs> Look, I'm just addicted to uh, portholes, okay? <laughs> I've been trying it. I'm a thick necked individual. I keep looking in the girl's window and then she puts the window down on my neck (laughs) to trap me to call the police, but now I can slip out. I am a sucker for those little cardboard displays you will see at the boardwalk 
where it's a big muscly guy and then like a sexy little babe in a bikini and you put your face through it and take a fun pitch. Except for me, I get way too into it <laughs> and I stick my whole head through it. It gets stuck. Yeah, it gets stuck, and it's so embarrassing. Me and my family, everyone sees it's the guy with the T-shirt that has all the families got the same T-shirt. Now they're embarrassed. I'm running around with the cardboard cutout. And the that's problem is, is when that happens, I get angry, and I start punching people. And that's where the lawsuits come in, kids. But at least I'm punching people while speaking English. <laughs> By the way, Vaseline neck, is that on your search history? Oh, yeah. What is this? My search history? No, I think that's a, a six. Bush song as well. Oh, Got a Vaseline deck, better than the rest. <laughs> uh, Try to wet <laughs> Vaseline deck. <laughs> I think I had a thought when I was growing up. I was like, glycerine. What the fuck is that? Is that for jerking off? <laughs> What is that like? A, what is it actually? What is that? Glycerine is uh, like, a, like a thing that makes something? you blow up, kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like nitroglycerin. Yeah, Head ball. got stuck again. <laughs> Glycerine. <laughs> uh, but, so his fr his buddies are like, oh, razor dude. blade neck case. Okay, no. and here comes suitcase. a suitcase. Here comes oh yeah, neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here comes a sick. I, I love that album, by the way. It's back, I listen to it all day. Album, oh oh my god, album. greedy fly. Folks at home, if you want to see some Fincher knockoff, look up that Ooh. music video. Yeah. The sick trailer line coming up here, because he wants to, he's like, I got to meet that lady that I love so much. Like, girl who jumps off the Eiffel Tower it clearly has issues, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. Trailer line. <laughs> Speaking of issues, one of those weirdos saved her shoe. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Glass houses okay. and whatnot. Okay, you guys have had enough smells. Give me it back. <laughs> Let's go in and oh, dude, that's there's uh, I, I have two thousand sex points and two million shoe points. <laughs> How oh. many points have I put my balls on the shoe? Oh, great! You guys had the shoe for too long. Now it just smells like Greg's dick. <laughs> Man, and then the part where like he's like, "Oh, I gotta find her. She might try it again." Yeah, and he has his friends go looking for the suicide note. Dude, if there was ever a fucking moment in motion picture history, it is f putting a search montage for a suicide <laughs> note to Smash Mouth's "Walking on the Sun." You might as well be walking on the sun. Looking through trash to find a suicide note. This is totally trash. It ain't no joke. You tried to kill yourself one time. You know what? Make a remake remix. You know, you might as well be walking on the moon. You yeah. might as well be picking through some trash. <laughs> you might as well be lubing up your neck. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to do this. Everything wet, everything wet. Give me more. It's just fucking stupid. And of course, like, should I fly to Los Angeles? <laughs> Find my Vaseline, brother. Bow, wow. It's just so fucking stupid that they find the suicide note. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, on. but you know, we get the fun and games. Yes, they find sure. grocery lists. Some old lady oh, tosses is change at very them. Very funny. Yeah. Oh, some old lady tosses change at them, and then the two of them fight over the money. Mm -hmm. They're just a couple of rascally dudes. That's, I mean, that's the point of this montage. If there is a point of this montage, yeah, is to give them anything to do and be rascally dudes. <sighs> yeah, it just like. I you know I, would it be a better movie maybe not but like someone like Kevin Smith give yep. me some dialogue yes. here give me yep. some fucking rat attack needs somebody fucking punch this up dude definitely they're all cartoons yeah like and then when it gets more serious later and when you're trying to turn Tom Everett Scott into a romantic lead at some oh. point in the middle <laughs> it's just ridiculous like he gets so annoying once he meets Julie he Delphi. does he's yeah. just like I'm obsessed with her I have to have her but yeah. yeah. I've saw her <sighs> once I'm obsessed. Well, I'm definitely normal. I mean, I'm a nice guy. Exactly. It was pointing out that he's a fucking psycho earlier in the movie on that train when he says about the sex points. I know sex points are bad too. I'm not saying those guys are good, sure. but there's sex and love. It's what diff it's different. It differentiates us from the animals. <laughs> Yikes. Dude. I love people. I don't <laughs> sex people. <laughs> 
I would never sex anyone. Well, because yeah. he's on this like bungee jumping fuckation <laughs> with these two fucking horn dog friends of his, and he's like, uh, guys. There's something to be said for making love. Get the fuck out of here. Exactly. And this Please. is what drives me nuts. It's like in that first movie, those guys are friends. Yes. Yes. He's not friends with these guys. I don't know no. what he's doing. What would he lose a bet? He has to be with these dudes? Yeah, they, he's they're... just hanging out with these guys that don't like him and he doesn't like them. Oh, uh, hey, Zach, what's up? Oh, what? Oh, you're not. You're you're backing out of the Daredevil trip. <sighs> But I don't know those guys. <laughs> Zach, those are your friends. I can't go backpacking through Europe with these two guys I don't even know. Uh-huh. Well, my name is on the T-shirt. Oh, if my name's on the T-shirt, I have to go. Okay, all right, I'll go if my name's on the T-shirt. Well, I mean, that's how they're going to, you know, how we're going to find each other when we're going around to <laughs> all those right. fantastic parks and shit. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. That You know what? That's cool. I'm still going to kill myself on the Eiffel Tower, though. <laughs> Don't you try to talk me out of it. This is still happening. Uh, but whatever. They find the note. He runs up running into her in the hospital anyway because she's stealing a heart. She's stealing a heart, which means... A hundred percent that someone just died in that hospital. Yep, absolutely. Yep, totally. Someone like, and the the family was already informed that there was a donor for the transplant. So there's this like, oh yeah, moment of hope for this family. And then it's like, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. A werewolf scientist <laughs> stole your husband's new heart. Well, a heart thievery is a big part of it. Like apparently her stepfather had been stealing hearts by the dozen to bring well, back dude, and to baby is, werewolf. I think what we're doing here is like, ooh, it's freaky Europe. Fucking, yeah. you're going to go over there, yeah. man. You'll meet some sexy lady in a bar and then boom, waking up in a bathtub <laughs> without your kidney. Yeah. You like the National Health Service so much? How about if they eat your heart? <laughs> yeah. So they wind up going to her house, and this is this is when it gets stalky because they show up. I think he gives her this shoe, and she's like, "Oh, thank you for the shoe." And he's like, "Well, I just want to make sure you're okay, and you're not going to do that again." And she's like, "It's none of your business. Please leave me alone. Not any of your concern. Thank you, American pig." And then she closes the door, and he's like, "Well, I gotta keep." He keeps knocking on the door. Like, Can I take you to lunch or what? Well, when she goes to close the door. When oh, she yeah. does close it the uh, first time, he notices she's got blood on her hand. It's not even your fucking business. It's her no, house. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. She says she's like redecorating uh, downstairs, painting. Paint. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. But, you know, another thing about this movie is I don't know anything about him, even when the movie ends. I don't know anything about her. Nothing. No. I don't what understand why they like each other. They kind of don't. No, they no, don't. No. Again, what is happening in this the, movie? The, again, in London, they have great chemistry. Like, yeah. you know, at least like, what David's all about, where he comes from, uh, what part of the country, all that stuff. You know and they I mean? have like, they have like consensual sex, and, <laughs> and that, which is and cool. In, and in this movie, you get to see part of her werewolf titties as she transforms. Oh my god! That with, scene. But it, that movie's got the heart of that relationship. Exactly. You can buy that relationship. Yeah. You care I don't about these buy people. this at all. No, of course not. Because also he's just like, and she's attracted to him in the first movie, where she's like. Oh, that man's quite attract. I'm quite attracted to you, as opposed to this fucking raving sex pest that keeps bothering <laughs> yeah. this woman. Julie Delpy spends the first forty five minutes of the movie screaming at him, "Go away!" <laughs> exactly. In several different scenes for several different reasons. So um, he convinces her to go to lunch with him, and then his friends, because he's never been on a date before, this fucking so six dope. foot four Tom oh, Everett Scott looking God. fuck dude, can't get can't get a girlfriend. They're like, dude. Wear my hat and my horrible jacket. Dude, they make him look like he is about to assassinate a president. <laughs> yeah. Like they put him in this dumb dad hat. And he's got these <laughs> sunglasses on and like they're like t giving him all these tips about yeah. like playing it cool and whatever. Like, <sighs> what are we doing? And we steal a, a bit from the cone heads, ladies and gentlemen. We're <laughs> fucking ripping off the cone heads because they put a bunch of condoms in his pocket. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. God, yes. This is the quote unquote funniest part of the movie, by you the way. Got it. Uh, Dude, he yeah. humiliates himself on this date. And he it's, says it's gum, and yeah. that's just like they make in America, we make condoms look like gum. It's yeah. fun. And then one of the right said Fred guys gets it in his soup and starts <laughs> eating it. This Dude with the skullet ponytail yes, combination. Don't, don't fuck with a muscle bound Frenchman like this, my friends. Absolutely not. Because she's like, I want you to. Oh, she's she's like offended. She, again, she thought he was a nice guy, and now he has condoms. And she's like, oh, Why don't you blow a bubble with your your gum? And he's like, Oh, oh. At that point, just be like, Yeah, hey, I wouldn't put it in my mouth. Like, yeah, it's fucking a bunch of condoms. Dude, you're know. just chewing lube. And I would argue now, it's not funny, but this is the. Funniest yes. scene of the movie because the you get to humor. see the condom get blown out of his mouth. Yeah. Yep. You see the full like 
you know, where the dick would go, the, the <laughs> schlong. Yes, you know? for sure. What is this, my search history? <laughs> <laughs> and it flies off into some soup. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Google, where does the dick go? <laughs> <laughs> and it gets CGI when, when it yes, flies around yeah, the room. Does. Yeah, God. yeah, because it does the like, and putters uh, out right into this guy's soup. I also, there's a line here that's sort of like, as if you needed any more hints that he's a fucking ugly American. Like, she goes, uh, she goes, uh, she pulls up on a bike or something for the date, and she's like, "Oh, so where do you want to go?" And he goes, uh, "Oh, I don't know. Is there like a cafe around here?" And she goes, "It's Paris." <laughs> <I'm> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, in every fucking block. Yeah, you have to take me for coffee because I am only fifteen years old. Because <laughs> that's what you know, that's you know, the math. I just did oh, the yeah, math of the really first movie. She would be a- fifteen. Yeah. Oh. 81 to 96? Yeah, that's that's not going to fly. <laughs> maybe it's a, maybe it's a uh, Friday the 13th timeline where in an alternate 19 uh, 2003. I think that's what you you have to or, do. They should remember yeah. Scott is just walking down the street. Thank heaven. <laughs> Poor little girl. Oh uh, dude, what's the sex points on uh, uh no, I'm not on Roman know. Polanski? No, no. <laughs> who, the the guy who should have directed this movie. Yeah, yeah, I think you get disqualified from the game. <laughs> and maybe get dis- qualified from society <laughs> you'd hope so but evidently not uh but so like but also in this scuffle another thing that just knew werewolf lore you're super strong all the time now yeah. yep okay what well, that's something like straight out of the buffy tv yes. show and i don't think they even did that also lame as fuck not funny not entertaining not cutesy not amusing not neat <laughs> the two buddies like follow them into the cafe yeah. and are like hiding behind huge menus like it's a fucking looney tune because it's like do we want to they still want to be Sucks. in the movie because yeah. they can't decide what the movie's supposed to be yeah. in this scene like it's totally just like all of, i was half waiting for that like i'm freaking you baby drive. i was waiting for that song to drop halfway yes. through this scene yeah. there could be there couldn't there's not but they're like if it's just him going on dates with her and his buddies are like feeding him line like Sereno de Bergerac type of shit. Sure. There could be an avenue for comedy there, but the, just hiding behind menus isn't it. It's just also, hijinks. Obnoxious as fuck. When he's like pr- getting prepped, when they're like putting the sunglasses on him and whatever, he says something like, oh, well, this is just our first date. And it's like, what are you talking about? You don't live here. How many dates do you think you're going to have? <laughs> How long are you intending to be in Paris? What the fuck is Look, any of this? We've got the marriage in two months. That's plenty of time, honey. <laughs> plenty of time. Where are they sleeping? That's, On the Eiffel Tower? We have no idea what hostel they're at or whatever. Or do they have a huge hotel room because they're a bunch of rich boys? We have no idea. Right. Secondarily, um, uh, because we're way into this episode and we're way into this movie too, it's an American W-H-E-R-E in, in fucking <laughs> Wolf in London in Paris. <laughs> because there's no fucking world for at least 40 minutes. You know what I mean? Like it's really bad. Because they wind up going back to her place and this guy is there, Andre Agassi on Skag, is Chris Cabin to Chris Cabin's <laughs> point. Uh-huh. Uh, is like, oh, I love Americans. Come to my my party. Uh Julie will be there. She will is, is it Julie? No, Seraph- Seraphine. Seraphine. Seraphine shall be there. Uh-huh. She'll meet you there. And they give him a flyer, and they wind up going to this werewolf yes, club. It's underground club, because she is a 15. <laughs> <laughs> no cutting. Oh, no cutting. <laughs> the idea that, like, I mean, like, obviously, I get it. Like, you're trying to do the scuzzy pub from the first movie. We're going to update it to rave culture. Yeah. This has got to be sooner than this, folks. Yep. It's got to be sooner yeah. than this. I, I mean, like, the first movie starts, they're in the town where the thing goes down. Yeah. You know, three and- American shithead tourists show up and they yep. run into a guy at the at the coffee shop. And he's like, you guys want to know where to really get laid tonight? Here, come to this club. Yep. And it's a fucking werewolf club that takes you seven fucking minutes. The, yep. the, it would be. And the werewolf club is disappointing. Yes. And we're doing rave stuff. I could use some glow sticks. Seeing some people illuminated by glow sticks as they get ripped apart. Man, Absolutely. Be fun. And this is this is. See, only like what? Like a year later. Right, Blade is 98. 98, like, yeah. They, 98, yeah, they right. do an underground, yes. you know, uh, fantastical monster rave thing so yep. well. And also, if I'm remembering, like, the timeline of Blade, that's fairly early on. Oh, in no, the that's, movie. We're oh, talking, yeah. like, minutes. Like, that, there, we, we, we start with somebody driving to that club. You go, Blade, it's not even Blade. Blade shows up at the club. Yes. You're following this one person who goes to the club, and it winds up being a vampire club. It's like, 
I don't know, two and a half minutes tops. And you don't need to like work your way up to this because the word werewolf <laughs> is in the title. Exactly. That, movie. that is where we should have got the first scare. This movie should have started like that, like Blade, and then have the father get eaten at that or whatever. Sure. Yep. Yeah. But so it's Andy's like, I wonder if Seraphine's going to be here. When's she going to get over here? <laughs> Seraphine. <laughs> and his buddies are like, well, we used to have personalities, but now we're just kind of like your left and right arm. <laughs> oh, cool. It's almost as if we could combine into one person and nobody would notice. <laughs> uh, okay. I guess I'll take my shirt off just to make things interesting. <laughs> it's getting a little yeah. boring. Right? You know how we were just giving you shit the entire time, not really your friends going off on our own thing? Now it's all about you for the rest of our lives. <laughs> and by the way, like, remember in the first one, like, the first wolf attack is, like, disorienting. It's yep. scary. Yep, yep. You see, like, it's physical. There's all this stuff. And this, it's just like, oh, bulgy neck. Yeah. Screamy. And this fucking, like, 2D leisure. Like, the, Did you say the wolf face she does when she's, like, cricking her neck. Oh, yeah. And it gross. looks like... A, it, it, it honestly looks like those old, uh, uh, we always talk about them, the uh, fucking <laughs> old internet stop. things. Fuck. Oh, yeah, Jib yeah. jabs. Oh, oh Jib jabs. Yeah, right. Jib jabs. They look more like camels than they do werewolves, especially <laughs> they when they're mutating. They when kind of, it reminds me. Or they look like uh, uh, the horses in uh, the oh, Boots Red. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, sorry to bother, to bother you. They oh, do. Yeah, the horse mutants. Yeah. They do. Yeah, they oh, definitely do. When man. Tom Everett Scott is on the train in the climactic scene, he looks like fucking Station. I'm sorry. Yep, yep, he yep, looks, because yep. he's You're standing, totally he right. looks like Station. It's awful. It's absolutely And also, uh, Chris, you said bulgy neck earlier. I want to throw out another Vaseline reference real quick. <laughs> sure. Vaseline that up. <laughs> um, neck. <laughs> <laughs> neck, where are you? <laughs> Uh, also a movie uh, that this I think is borrowing from to the idea of like you go into this club you think you're gonna get sex and they lock you in uh, it's Dust Till Dawn that's it's, yep. it, which came yep. out a year before this oh yeah you're right better movie and that movie holds up kind of I think it does also yeah. Bordello of Blood Steve oh, that's which is a couple <laughs> years before and that the sex points Quentin Tarantino is trying to wrap up <laughs> oh, in that yeah, movie that's absolutely true. another 25 for feet man <laughs> <laughs> you know Quentin it just doesn't count anymore also taking pictures of Liddy's feet also, also writing and directing major motion pictures wherein you get to film women's feet is not sex points. Okay, dude. man. How about just feet and mouth? That <laughs> has to be in the mouth. I like. What is this? My search <laughs> I'm not even committing to it anymore. I'm just mumbling. <laughs> it. So the the one <laughs> guy gets <laughs> the one guy gets like freaked out or whatever. He's like. I don't know. Something about this club kind of sucks. I'm going to go back to Seraphine's. Is that what happened? Well, no, he's like, oh, because uh, Andy's like, oh, man, Seraphine's not here. I'm going to go to her place. Like, no, Andy, you stay here. I'll go to Seraphine's place because all I want to do is cause I support you, brother, man. Talk to you soon. And also, <laughs> also, I feel like I'm going to get murdered in this club. It smells like piss in here. Yes. <laughs> piss and blood. Uh, so what he discovers her that she had, she, she like, Locked, locked herself into his cell. Yeah. Sure. Good move. Yeah, that's what yeah. you do. That's what you're supposed yeah. to do with your werewolf. Smart lady. So they do. That's what uh, Seth Green does on Buffy. He does uh, every yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes he gets out. That's bad. Uh, that's but right. that's what we call robot chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get bit by a robot chicken. <laughs> Look you got to make a fucking puppet show for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're cursed to walk the earth <laughs> making a fucking puppet show. Oh, wow, hon. Look, a robot chicken. What do they think of next? Uh, what I love is the people that are so proud to work on that stuff. I <laughs> <laughs> think it's like curing cancer. Anyway. <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> she finds out that Andy and is at the uh, werewolf club. So she's like, you have to. Hi. She's like, yeah, uh, oh, my God, I have to go save him. She locks Chris in the cage to, for his own safety because right. there's a bunch of werewolves about. Meanwhile, the club gets locked up. All these French dudes turn into werewolves. And it's not that. Oh, actually, she gets there before. She gets and like, yes, take whisks Andy away. And then Brad, the other guy, is like, where's everybody going? And <laughs> they go into this tunnel system. Two werewolves follow them. And like this scene, the werewolf scene uh, in the club needs to be. Oh, the Wishmaster Two scene, you know what I mean, or like, yep. you know what I mean, like it needs. To, yes. If you're do, if you're setting it up where it's a werewolf in a room full of people, and I've been patiently sitting at your R-rated movie yep. for forty minutes, yep. it needs to be fucking carnage. Yep. And I'm like, Paint okay, the walls. It may, mm -hmm. it's got to be the Piccadilly Circus scene from yes. the first movie. Yes, and that's another thing is like that's what it works so well in that first movie, the way that. Like they wait until yes. the very end of the movie and have this just explosion of violence yeah. that just goes for like 15 minutes and it's fucking great. And in like 
you diffuse all of that by having like the quote unquote cool part happen so early on like this, but yeah. then also like it's not cool and it looks <laughs> terrible. So yeah. like you yeah. waste the opportunity twice. And in in that first movie, it's like the pandemonium of the whole city going crazy over it in that intersection. Yeah. And here it's just like, well, it's uh, in this tucked away area. No one's ever going to see it. No, it's not going to get too exciting. Someone might fall into a fucking crick under the fucking catacombs. But that's, that's about it. It is it. And you know, it's, you, you, I mean, like, there's a lot of implied whatever. You don't even see, like, I think somebody's arm gets ripped off. Like, they're trying to reach out the door and the guy rips out the yeah. arm. Oh, yeah. That's sort of something. Yeah. Question. Um, the big bald bouncer guy, is he, like... A guy who, because what do they call them in Blade? And oh, other, the, the familiars, I think. Helper. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, is that what's going on here? Is I, it like a you bounce for all these like werewolf orgies we're gonna do, and if, like eventually, eventually Trevor will bite your ankle one day. He gets all of the uh, wallets mm. after. Oh, that's wallet. a good deal. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. You're the werewolf awesome. wallet inspector. And also, the last thing I want to do is be a fucking werewolf vampire. Definitely, well, I, well, I can well, be well, talked well, to be a vampire. Hold up a second, vampire. Yeah. Every day, you can't go outside during the sunlight. Actually, that's probably pretty cool. But <laughs> the werewolf thing, it only fucking matters, what, a few a few weeks? What? But then I'm not even in control of what I'm doing. I'm just going, bah, 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 sure, and I wake sure. up covered in blood. Great. It's another fucking Saturday for Steve. I guess that's fair, but I'm just saying, <laughs> like, your life could be unchanged pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I think, though, see, every yeah. monster situation has its pros and cons, because mm. I think the other thing to consider, vampirism... Just the one and done transformation. So it sucks ass, it hurts, you feel oh, like that's garbage. True, that's true. But it's just one time. Yeah. Werewolf every fucking month. You live forever. You get to do you're living forever and like yeah. you, it seems like you are mostly in control of who you are and are not no, killing. Right. Nobody in most wants, mythologies. Nobody wants to be Frankenstein though, right? No, no, no. Nobody. Oh. No. Just mechanical rotting corpse pieces. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess I'll, I guess vampires oh, cool. Yeah. I would want to be I Frankenstein. That means I'm Aaron Eckhart. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Being the invisible man might have its perks. Oh, oh absolutely. yeah. Until Hollow Superman man fucks you in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm your uncle. Let me tell yeah. you a joke, kids. Yeah. Superman, yeah. right? The Invisible Man and Superman are part of the same pantheon. No, they're not. Anyways, <laughs> let, 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 don't, don't worry about it. The Invisible Man sounds so great until you take a ride on Captain w Wonder Woman's Invisible Airplane. <laughs> and then, you know, you borrowed that. You crash land. No one could find you or the wreckage. <laughs> what is the deal in the the graphic novels of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Mr. Hyde yes, fucks the Invisible Man in the ass. Yes, where really? Alan Moore, Alan Moore is very classy that way. That's nice. People mm -hmm. people say he's a genius. Some people do. And some, some stuff's great. Some no, stuff's some, okay. no, some of it is. But now that I know that he's got ass fucking stuff, <laughs> what is this, my search history? <laughs> See, that one you believed in. Uh, yeah, sometimes you, you don't believe it, sometimes yeah, you don't. You got, a bed, you got out of bed for that one. <laughs> uh, but so, like, she, as they're escaping, she pushes Andy away because she's now turning into a werewolf. Also, it, I don't know, you turn into a werewolf at, like, I don't know, 9.45 at night. Like, it's just... Yeah, I, is, that's not just when the moon is rising. What I was also going to get at is another thing that diffuses even the werewolf shit in this movie is this serum that they can inject to become yeah, werewolves geez. whenever they want. Right. Awesome. Yep. That's uh, werewolf uh, what, on demand. So what's the fucking point? Why even be werewolves? Just make well, them monster men. Because isn't it the thing? It's like a one single line. She says, or Claude, I think, actually reveals it that he wants to like create a werewolf army so werewolves can take over the a human race like an anti-technology yeah. cult that yeah, are going to become it, can werewolves I have more on that so wait hang on a second though yeah that's some sort of like luddite bullshit yeah. but like you used medical science to create this thing asshole good point i mean but also like again as a werewolf you you're basically just getting blackout drunk you have no control of what you're doing yeah. you know what i mean exactly. so it's just like what you do every few weeks anyway. Right? <laughs> exactly. Your life would be unchanged. <laughs> yes, but I'm not murdering people and eating chicken. Oh, but wait. No, yeah, that's right. okay. I do think a wear planet would be cool. Ooh, wear or, planet. Or the, the idea of like, I want, like, in the, we talked about it a little bit with the first movie. I mean, you know, you get the wear army. That's interesting. That's like the. Yeah. Uh, you would get. Me, like way more members just saying, I just want to create a army of werewolves than saying we're an anti-technology cult <laughs> yep. that also wants to be werewolves for some well, reason. I, mean, I know it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but think about this. You pair paratroop some werewolves down into Silicon Valley. Oh, yeah. oh my God. 
Yes. They Absolutely. could destroy all of Facebook and, uh, you know, all that other shit. Oh, dude, you, it's, it's like the end of Fight Club, but it's with the werewolves. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, man. You, you met me at a very hairy time in my life. <laughs> Elon Musk would turn into a hairless werewolf. Oh, it would yeah. just be like a Mr. Bigglesworth situation, <laughs> except for really big. I got to tell you, I'm seeing more and more Teslas on the road. What the fuck is Dude, your problem? It's I don't know. I, you just don't care about anybody, I guess. I guess so. Here's, a, here's this robot. Isn't it amazing? It's a person. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. It's a person. Yeah, I don't know. I just what like I'm it. Doing. You could name your stupid car after any inventor or whatever. All oh, the new Einsteins are out. So. <laughs> Didn't He's trademark that asshole. Uh, but so the he no went- Nietzsche convertible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, here's a moment for some of the terrible comedy in this movie. It's a great example. Is she's fucking screaming at him in this catacomb, like while she's turning into a werewolf to like get out of there. And he's like, no, but I gotta save you. And she screams, like, get out. And he goes, oh, I will just never understand women. Shut the fuck up and get out of here, <laughs> please. Uh, some cool almost transformations of her, like that midway. She's got like the weird uh, Klingon forehead going for a second. We're and this is what sucks ass is like we obviously budgeted for a teeny tiny bit of practice. Exactly, effect, it's a tease. But like, boy, does it just not even matter? Uh, he runs away, and it's important. He spears a werewolf that is about to. That's the, the werewolf that scratches him or bites his foot. He spears yes. it first. Yeah. Ow, my ankle! <laughs> and meanwhile, Vince Valouf rat races Vince Valouf as uh, Brad gets killed. And they, I mean, like again, like the Griffin Dunn murder a, which comes like twenty minutes earlier in, in the good movie. Is so brutal and so horrific because you like this character yeah. and he's screaming for his life and his blood is going everywhere. It's so chicken shit because it, we're just doing the Jurassic Park bit where it, it, something jumps on him and then you see a water drain and all this oh, uh, water red. comes out. It's, he gets yeah. nedried. He does kind of get nedried. <laughs> Don't we also see cloudy red water uh, yes. cam like him underwater? Well, he, and then his body falls out yes. of the, the the drain too. It's like blood, blood, blood. Then his body pops out. But right. that's it. And it's also just a dumb. He's like, "Hey guys, what are you doing down here? The party's just getting going upstairs." <laughs> like, know. what? Well, I want to see this guy get be- fucking beheaded. That'd be uh, something. Yep. Come on, let's get back to the party with no girls. <laughs> <laughs> Sick dude. Yeah, no girls. A yeah. lot of dogs. Is she out of this cage at this point? Am I confusing pl- part? Yeah, yeah, no, she's out. She, she's yeah. just, we don't know where she is. And that dude her. is locked in instead because she wants him to be safe. You can't go back to the club because yes. the club people are food. And, and then his, he uses like his chain wallet and, to help get the key to get his, out. And his rock and bod. Dude. Yeah. So we get to see totally. him strip to use his clothes to throw it across the room. And then what? He throws a shoe to knock the key, and yeah. then he drags it back. Wow, that's something. Some I'll, sexy little scene. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't think of that. <laughs> no. Probably not. I would have stayed in that cell for the rest of the movie. And well, I don't want for it. I'd be like, I don't want to take my shirt off in case anyone comes in here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anyone's going to be coming in here anytime soon. I'm I know uh, it might save my life, but I'm just not comfortable taking my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the character that we actually see what's going on yeah, with the stepfather. With the the werewolf that is now changed chained to a hospital bed, no legs, very cool. Very the werewolf cool. stepfather. So is he only her father every full moon? Is that how that works? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I don't need to pay alimony this week. <laughs> Look, there's there's really realistically like two to three days out of the month where we can have sex. The rest of the time, it's disgusting. <laughs> oh, werewolves fucking my mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like this creature, it's cool looking. It's like cool. yeah, the werewolf was chained down to the bed. It's a double double amputee werewolf, and like it starts going after him. It knocks its bed over, and it's crawling. Like it all is really cool. And it's it's the best part of the movie, kind yeah. of. But and he like tries to pick a lock to get out of there, and it turns out to be a closet. Yeah, it's kind of funny. He climbs up over the th- the the door and to jump over this turned over hospital bed really parkour moves like this is yes. fucking yep. pretty impressive how this guy does this and this yeah. is kind of like this guy's last scene the rest of the movie he's just kind of tied up for the most part dude the reveal of this dude <laughs> he's like still in the werewolves clutches tied to a cross <laughs> like 40 minutes later what, what happened i mean he jumps out the window here yeah. and gets away so then i guess he 
goes to the club and gets captured? No, you see later, like the next morning. So next morning, Andy wakes up in uh, Seraphine's bed and she's trying to gently break it to him that he's a werewolf. And Chris is telling him to get out of there. Yeah. And then, but Chris gets captured by Claude. And that's kind of like, he just, he goes, and that's but it. so this is a confusing part of the movie though, because yes, all of that, but then like, like it's it's Tom Everett Scott's like at the window because Chris has been yeah. like throwing pebbles up to yeah. get his attention or whatever. That all happens, but then in that same movement, is it not also revealed there's a, like he's dreaming and what? having like fucked up on and off. It's a double triple dream, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is which happens in the original and, thing. But, and we also get um, some very pointless Julie Delpy nudity for sure. Some yep, real deal. Right. Yep. I, I feel like she legitimate actress Julie Delpy had to be like. Can we just sit down one more time? What? What? Why am I taking my shirt off here, guys? What's 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 the point? What's the? Well, you got to rock and buy. I, 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 I know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, okay, noted, noted. But me, I'm an actress. I'm in a scene. I'm a character, right? It's in the contract. You got to yeah. rock and buy. Yeah, Welcome yeah. to Hollywood. <laughs> I know. It's a- I forgot to mention it, but earlier in the film, she puts uh, a heart in a blender and spins it around. Uh, that's to that happens right oblivion. now. Oh, is it right now? It happens right Eve's, now. Get Eve Six going, baby. The song existed. I'm fairly certain <laughs> yep, the song yep. existed by this point. I want to look that up, actually. But I, I thought the same thing. I was like, there are literally. Or is it written because of blenders. this? Because of this great art film? Ooh, that's probably not Ooh. true. <laughs> want to rub my tender neck with Vaseline? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. We're uh, still doing that bit. No, but so yeah, she, she, um, She's trying to give him a, a smoothie, a blood smoothie of heart. Like, it's going to help you with the transformation. And he's like, what is going on here? It's entirely possible oh. that the songwriter of Eve 6 was inspired by this oh. movie because this tune was released in May of 1998. Oh, wow. okay. So, yeah, dude, definitely. Yeah. Look, I wanted you to tie me to the bedpost because I'm a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a great hit, uh, singer of Eve 6. <laughs> Um, but, you know, we should take out all the werewolf stuff so it's more, you know. Here's yeah. to the nights we turn to wolves. Uh, but so she's like, oh, you're you're going to be a werewolf. It's going to be really scary. He's like, what? What? She's like, okay, you're really nervous. Let me take my shirt off and you can put your hands on my breasts to relax. Center. <laughs> Center. Yes. And uh, so well, that calms that. me down, dude. A couple of handfuls mm-hmm. of hooters there. Yeah. <laughs> sure. What, is this my search history? <laughs> uh, and the, the double <laughs> fake dream he has is like her doing that again. But then this is what she has werewolf nipples. Does she got like eight yeah. werewolf nipples? Yes, it's really something else, isn't it? Mm. Ooh. Now, I would wager that 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 wolf milk would taste better than human milk as an Interesting. adult male. Interesting. Hmm. You know? You think so? Yeah, I mean, gee, I don't know. B- human breast milk seems weird to me oh, as, no, as an adult. Oh, no, I thought you meant like cow's milk. I was like, you're taking oh, no, no, the milk. No, 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 I'm talking oh. about her. Well, <laughs> I'm talking about human milk Got versus it. wolf milk. Breast milk versus wolf breast milk. Yeah. I think human breast milk, at least, is supposed to be a little on the salty side. Really? Really? Okay, oh, I yeah. I heard that somewhere. But wolf milk, you know, it nurtured, what was it, Romulus and Remus. That's yeah. <laughs> true. Yeah, that's right. The definers of empire. I mean, it probably tastes like hair, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I don't know. Just something to muse about yeah. on your way home today. Folks. Wolf milk sounds like a band that released, released a really good album in 2007. Yeah. Yep. Wolf milk. <laughs> Then broke up immediately because <laughs> they were like, you know what? I cannot possibly go out on stage another night and say we are Wolf Milk. <laughs> we are the first post trip hop alt dance band, Wolf Milk. I think what threw that in my head too was also the uh, the, the Wolf Child and the alternate ending. Yes. Oh, so breast right. milk's been on the mind also since my search history. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so whatever he winds up. Uh, this is when the, the uh, apparently Jenny a gutter's nurse character comes back uh, or sure whatever. Um, and he jumps out because he's like, "What in the world? I'm Tom Everett Scott." Soinks. <laughs> I just love. I mean, werewolf superpowers or no? Uh, you see a fucking ghost, and your thing is, I'm jumping out this window. Oh, but, you, Chris just made a really good point by saying Zoinks, which he did. <laughs> which is, uh, close your eyes and imagine how much better this movie is with Matthew Lillard in the lead. Yep. <laughs> it's just, it it's like 10 times better. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 10, 20 times he better. Can, he also, can handle the comedy better. Yes. Yeah. Or if there was Scooby Doo helping them out, would also be good. 
That's also true. Ruh -roh. <laughs> uh, so Tom Everett Scott makes his way back to the club where like the the fucking police are on the yeah. scene, and this is so unbelievable. This guy just like walks right through the crime scene yeah. tape, right, and I'm like, can any fucking gendarme out there stop this guy? What are you doing? We do not know how to do police work. <laughs> we are French, don't you understand? We are weak. So they find he, they find Brad in the drain, and Tom Everett Scott tries to be moved by that, and, and he gets he <laughs> misses that dartboard completely. He gets interviewed by the police, so now the police are kind of on his tail. This is when he starts to be, and again, totally not what the, like the first movie. David is just like I'm not a werewolf. I'm just a regular person. He has like weird dreams. Maybe right. he wants like some like rarer meat. Like he's not, you know, that, because he's not hungry at all. He's, he's not, not hungry. At he's all. not hungry. That, that's the bit. Here it's like he's like walking around like a dog. He's got soup. It's Teen Wolf. We're doing Teen Wolf. He, yeah, yeah. He wants. He gets. They go to this bistro. He gets a steak. He wants it rare. He wants it even rarer, bloody. And then he starts sniffing a girl's ass and pussy. Yeah, <laughs> dude, he does. It's like a fucking dog. It is. It's Julie Bowen, I'm by so, the way. Sorry oh, to be geez. crude here, but it's true. And I mean, yeah, this is what back when Julie Bowen was just sort of like babe meat. You know what I mean? Like yep. this and Happy Gilmore. Like, oh yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think she's good in Gilmore, though. Oh no, she is. But I mean, she. But like the outfits is what sure. I'm talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, the I think she's thing, pretty good in this. Actually, I think for what the, for what this movie is asking her to do, I think she sure. does a pretty she, good job. She here. does it perfectly. Sure, sure. The other thing that is also happening, like right as he makes his way to this bistro where he's asking for the steaks, is um, he's got other heightened senses. Like he's walking through Paris, and like he can, they're doing a lot of like he can hear stuff from far away. Oh, yeah, there's a fly. He hears it at some point. I think maybe in Seraphine's bedroom. Okay, I don't never I comes don't back. Any of no, them. no, nothing ever comes of any of this. And yeah, I do hate how it goes from like. The gag is he's not hungry until he's going to turn and yeah. eat humans from the first movie into like, yeah, I just want this cooked rarer. Bloody. Blah. And I'm just doing goofy shit now. Yeah. Excuse me while I flail. <laughs> and uh, Brad shows up as a zombie. And well, J Julie Bowen's character is like an American tourist. Like, oh, my God, an American. And like, she's just like, you're hot. And they're like yeah. kind of hanging out. She's get horny yeah. because he's an American. Yeah. Specifically. She's sucking a green bean like it's something else. Yeah. Or... Why would you why would you go all the way to Paris to fuck an American? I mean, what's That's true? Yeah. It's My stupid. experience, girls here don't even want to fuck an oh. American. <laughs> no, I just can't get over that nowhere accent. <laughs> Ooh, that flat. Ooh, that flat accent. That's so sexy. Oh my God! He speaks one language. <laughs> oh my God! Is that is that an Ohio accent? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! He's wearing a baseball cap of a college football team. <laughs> oh my God! He wow, just, Americans are hot. <laughs> oh my God! Oh my God! He just said grinder. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he keeps. Endlessly talking about spicy ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man! If I had a time machine, I'd go back to 1996 and invent spicy ketchup. Oh, dude, oh, you'd, dude. you'd be way a millionaire. Way, way ahead of everything. Yeah. Now, you know, younger listeners might not know this, but like avocado didn't exist yet back then. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like none of that shit. Sriracha, etc. You could have. Sitting on a gold mine. Yeah, condiment tycoon Eric Sisko. Well, yeah. yeah. You, you gotta go to the 70s and when everyone's just eating meatloaf fucking four days a week, you'd be like, yo, dude, an avocado on, and, mm -hmm. and chicken on a sandwich is pretty fucking good. Think about that. And then we'd have at least two terms of the Carter administration. <laughs> That's right. You just saved the fucking history. planet. Fuck. Yeah. That's Don't worry, I'll about. stave off Reagan. I'll keep Reagan <laughs> out of the out of the White House. <laughs> Brand new Cisco Prada. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I guess with with Carter in the mix, I'd have to invent some type of peanut sauce. Yes, <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Sounds some delicious, Thai peanut sauce. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but so yeah, Thai food was forbidden. <laughs> we weren't even eating sushi. Yeah. We were just getting used to it. Just the first range of it. There's yeah. probably like the first Thai restaurant was in 1984. <laughs> <laughs> In America, not. Yeah. And yeah, it's like yeah. only in Los Angeles, like one yeah. place yes. in Los Angeles. <laughs> one place. Um, there is a whatever, um, the, huge points off for Brad, the ghost guy. He has a scary voice. It's like, yep. well, that's like, Pardon. did you see the first movie? And again, that's like the great, uh, the foresight of Landis yeah. to be like, 
play it bubbly and charming. Yes. Like, don't play it angry. Play it happy-go-lucky. Yes. And that's why Griffin Dunn is so memorable. But yeah, yeah in this, he's but, just, he's angry ghost guy. And that's horror comedy, right? It yes. has to be both of those things hitting each other. Yep. This doesn't, this just wants to be like a teen movie, but it doesn't land on any footing. No, this is like my boyfriend's back, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Or like, um, which is actually a better movie. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is. Did this come Fuffins out? in that, dude. Oh, oh yeah, it definitely yeah. is. Yeah, small role. Did, did this come out before or after Idle Hands? Because I feel like that's a Idle Hands might be 98 or 99. Yeah, it's kind of a either. photo finish, yeah. but like that same kind of like, I've got two dead friends, which I believe in that movie are Eldon Hansen yep. and uh, what's his name? Little uh, tiny Seth guy. Green. Seth Green. Yeah. Uh, 90, oh, yeah. 99, my friends. Oh, okay. Ooh. Yeah, um, but it's that same kind of like, we're the dead zombie yes. friends. <laughs> well, and that's, that's taken literally from American. They're skipping Paris. They're going back to London, you know? Right. Cause they're trying to be fun and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, sure. Uh, but whatever. He's like, you're going to turn into werewolf, blah, blah, blah. He's trying to do it. And again, like it is like fucking like, I don't know, eight, nine, ten o'clock. And like, <laughs> he's just walking around like a person. And then he takes Julie Bowen to Jim Morrison's grave. Jesus. They're going to fuck on Jim Morrison. And not that I'm a huge Jim Morrison fan, but like, that's pretty disrespectful to anybody, I would think. Well, yeah. I mean, he, he, he would at least see that your dick is small. right? <laughs> He'd be into it. I think maybe even he was like in his will. He was like, "Please have people fucking on yeah. my grave." No, I think he would sing something like, "Come on, leave my grave alone." <laughs> <laughs> but Come remember, on, leave my grave alone. To Chris's point, he was a, a dumb American twenty-seven-year-old <laughs> full of sex and drugs and alcohol. I mean, he likes you know. Yeah, he yeah. Might, might have enjoyed it. Yeah, but, that's true. But I do agree that we shouldn't be. <laughs> Tormenting spirits. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, my grave. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, I don't know. It's just such an obviously dumb thing. Yeah. You know, like what's a what's a fucking landmark in Paris that, that would, would be mean like, something cool to do to an American. Yeah, because yeah. because Julie Bowen is even like, oh, I love Jim Morrison. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I uh, guess so. They're fu- did this we already th- use up the Eiffel Tower? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, there's certainly no more landmarks in Paris. Better go fuck on Jim oh, Morris. Wait, grave. we could go to the Louvre. Oh, we already said it. Oh, fuck. So they're fu- <laughs> they're they're full on fucking. He is, I mean, and not to get graphic on this show, I would hate to do that. No. He is inside her when he starts to change. Everybody yeah. else Ooh, noticed that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is like, did you did you feel the red rocket? It was like it went in yes. normal, and then it turns into the red rocket. Oh, That's do you think cool. that she was like, oh, I think it fell out. You got to put it back in. And he's like, no, now it's just a smaller dog dick. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to readjust myself now. I got to readjust my stance. My penis is now turned into a smaller well, dog dick. She gives. A, she's like, oh my god, it's like it's it, the 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 implication is that like he singed her down there because his skin's got oh, so hot. That's yes. cool. Interesting. Before yeah. he fucking jumps oh, right. into the pool. Hot because, pack. Yeah, his whole body's like overheating. Which is from the first one. He's, that's what, what uh, David's like, I'm fucking burning up, man. And so yeah. Which is kind of, hey, hey, much better. But also like, yeah, yeah I mean, like, that's got to be a hot rocket right there. Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so she's like, is everything okay? He jumps into the pool and we just do gremlins kind of yeah, a thing. Yeah, it's like a fountain It's or a something. fountain. And this is straight up from the trailer. And I think they even inserted it into the special American Werewolf in Paris mouth music video mm. that they made. Oh yeah, this oh, sorry, shot because Bush is playing right now. This yes. is the, yeah, which, this is where the, this the is best where, music drop of the movie. Mm-hmm. But we yep. waste it in this dumb scene, and yeah, this is like he jumps out of the fountain, full werewolf mode, whatever. And she and there's also a, one of the a French detective was like following him with a dog as oh, well. Yes, and like <sighs> she's running around, and she realizes that. The werewolf is going to follow her perfume, so she's putting it in different muzzle, muzzle What's the point oh, of ha- I completely ha- missed that. having police at all in this? They don't do shit. They don't no. do anything. Bodies. I mean, that's like, it's funny in the first movie because like the one guy's dumb. Yes. And then the other guy has the incredibly graphic decapitation yes. at the end of the movie. Yeah. These two guys, the one guy you don't, this guy with the dog, you don't see him yeah. get actually attacked. And the other cop who kind of makes it towards the end of the movie, I don't think you see him get got either. He like goes into a tunnel and you never see him again. Yeah. What the so what Wonderful. Well, so, like, and even in that one, like you have the doctor like building up the menace of yes. being a werewolf. Like there's no sense here that there's like, 
It's all because the fucking techno cult. Like yes. you scrap all the stuff that actually makes it scary right. for techno cult. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he winds up getting her in a mausoleum. But no, no, first he gets the detective and his dog. The next morning he wakes up and like there's a. I was actually like. Oh, this is a great idea because he wakes up next to a dead dog puppet. Yeah, and I kept expecting him to be haunted by a dog, like that would be a dog, like it's all like covered cool. in blood, and he's yeah. like, rawr, rawr, rawr. and he's like, I don't know, man, leave yep. me alone, you dog. It would be fucking <laughs> and and you just inspired this. They treat it like Han Solo and Chewbacca. The dog is barking, and Tom Everett Scott is understanding it and responding back in English. That see, that's that's comedy. That's the horror comedy right there. Yep, it's yep. actual it's humor. Blood covered. Dog, you know, it would be great. Uh, but no, he gets arrested because he's killed Joey, Julie Bowen, and these other people, and the dog. And like, he goes, and, I don't even know how it happens. What they're having him identify people in the morgue, and is then they it, leave him alone. Is it that, or is it like a look what you did, you little <laughs> jerk? <laughs> I guess so. Because it's like, I guess to maybe prove, like, yes. yep, see, they're definitely dead. So we're going to leave you alone with these dead bodies. And yeah. and, and like, and now Julie Bowen shows up as a zombie. Yep. And they're yeah. ar- she's, she's arguing she with. She says, thanks for a loving, lovely evening, douchebag. That's fun. There's it's a guy funny. a few uh, rows down that says, hey. I can't rest in pieces down here. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that fucking sucks shit. Uh, I was like, get your ghost head back in that drawer. That really sucks. The the cop uh, picking up the Muppet dog, dead dog. (laughs) This thing, it's so silly looking. I want this dead dog puppet because it's just really (laughs) fucking funny. Um, But then, like, she's like, you have to kill yourself. But Brad's... Brad isn't killed by him, so he's like, no, he's my best bud, and he's going to kill my werewolf. And, and it's like, that's, it's kind of an interesting sure. addition to what the first movie sets up. Sure. Right? And, like, that's some nice sequel building shit. It's like, you killed me. Kill yourself so I can move on. No, well, not just yet. I need his help getting the fucking dude that got me so I can move on. And, like, that's a Something. thing. Yeah. Ultimately, does not matter. No. It, does, it goes nowhere because he escapes, and this is the 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 car chase sequence. Am I wrong here? Is this it, or is it later when he escapes? I think he escapes, and then he goes to <sighs> Seraphine's house. And this is when Claude shows him his other buddy, and he's like, <sighs> "Join my techno pagan horseshit cult, uh, or whatever." I mean, the, the yeah. middle of this movie gets so muddy. It does. It really. It like nothing makes sense anymore until. Then we just have like our climax at that stupid club again. Yeah, exactly. It's another club thing. It's like the the middle ground here. The, I, the only thing I do want to say is him getting into all those car accidents is pretty funny. Yes. Yeah, yeah. An American werewolf attraction. <laughs> I was waiting for Benny Hill songs to start going off in this. Yeah, like no. it, it's like literally like oh I mean I guess it's more blues like end of Blues Brother. This is like. <laughs> Oh, okay. Now I'm remembering the car chase. He's jumping on top of the cars. Yes, and the buses. And, and he's in a car away. and he gets hit by a bunch of. I think it's either from the police or the werewolf cult. I think it's from the werewolf cult because, like, he's asked to kill his best friend to join the werewolf cult. And then he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Because he says something about Claude is like, by the way, dude, uh, you becoming a werewolf was a total accident. We should have just continued eating you. Uh, but that wasn't the case. And yeah, they do try to like indoctrinate him. Yeah, but then he escapes and he like steals a car and they yeah. go back to Seraphine's lair. Yes. And then like the dad is dead, killed <laughs> off screen by the cult, I guess. Which is, and they steal all of the, the serum. Well, the dad is like flatlining at the start right. of the scene. Yeah, like, he walks just... in and Seraphine's got the fucking paddles on him. Yeah. It's horse shit. I mean, like it's it's so meaningless and she's like, Oh no! Now they could become werewolves whenever. Because my and also it's not even like you're totally right, Eric. Like it's one thing. It's weird that like he's like, oh, if I give you this depressant, it'll just so like what any old depressant is going to do it. The alcohol going to do it. Like you know what I mean? Like (laughs) there is a chart on the on the board. Like the like Emmett Brand like veered into an alternate 1985, (laughs) veered into an alternate where state, and it's like here's where it'll peak with the moon. Oh yes, you're right. It's like. Right here, right here at almost the peak, we'll give you the depressant and you won't get, you won't become a werewolf. Right. You'll just try to kill yourself instead. It, it all makes so much sense. <laughs> this is, I mean, this is also where she talks about like we were trying to engineer like a cure for lycanthropy. And I was like, shut the fuck up. Yep. Fuck you, movie. <laughs> Indeed. She so, also yeah. reveals like this is, she says to him, like, by the way, 
yeah, I was the one that fucking killed my own mother yes. and I fucking ate my stepdad's legs or whatever happened. No, 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 no. That's what he's like. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> like corn cob. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it was a tragic accident, but my stepdad's legs, total numbers. Total numbers. <laughs> That's good thigh meat. There's That's some of the is. fridge left over. <laughs> oh, definitely just well, pick it out all Let week. it go to waste. Yeah. Some, yeah. Da- some dad leg cutlet. Yeah. <laughs> you have to get into the knees. You know, there's some little good pieces of meat in there. Oh, yeah. Suck out the cartilage. <laughs> uh, Ooh, bone marrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Totally. Can we have some of my stepdad's legs for the table, please? <laughs> <laughs> Chicken legs? Uh, oh, also, like, this is... I don't know what prompts this, because, again, there's, like, no chemistry or emotional relationship between the two of them. Somewhere around here, there is some serious fucking tongue kissing that's happening. I mean, again, like, the movie tells you that they like each other, so you have to believe it, I guess. Like, yeah. But it's just funny because it's just, like, tongue kissing, tongue kissing, tongue kissing. And then there's this like hard, style. yeah, oh yeah. But then there's just this hard cut to him just being chased by these guys, and it's like, <sighs> did uh, did part of the movie fall out of the tube <laughs> TV stream that I, I was watching? I think so. It it is so muddled. It is so confused. This is where all the ch- this is where he's on top of the car. Yeah, he's doing Ooh. some Jackie Chan's shit here yeah. a little yes, bit. Like, absolutely. So what is it? There's like a 4th of July party, party yes. Americans only, because they're the scum of the earth. I agree, by well, the way, as an American. And push that a little bit, because like, yeah. I think Claude like is just like, oh, I'm a Luddite, whatever. He gives some speech about how Americans are garbage, but that needs to be sort of his thing. It's like, all these fucking American tourists come yeah. here. I fucking hate it. I'm a werewolf. I want to yeah. eat all... Any and all Americans. I hate Americans, you, period. You really- all like your KFC <laughs> and your WWE wrestling. You, you opposed our Kosovo interventionism. <laughs> <laughs> your reality television. Man, I remember mean, when people used to get mad in the 90s and you think back, like, why? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I mean, I understand for civil rights purposes, but. <laughs> sure. But this, um, let's if I can go with this. Oh my God, we're losing all these Americans in Paris. They're all becoming werewolves. That is at least like a good Bond villain esque thing. Yes. Right? And that's a motivator of some kind. Yes. Maybe. It's just, but it's so weak. And like, he, it's four guys. Hey, like, that's the villain. Four fucking guys who want to be werewolves. Hey, Al, I need you to go to Paris and sort this werewolf shit out, man. As you know, I got to stay locked in a cage in the basement of the White House. I, too, am a werewolf. (laughs) Oh, Hillary, sorry, I got to take another trip to Jeff's Island so I don't ruin anybody with my lycanthropy. I don't know much about lycanthropy, but I know a lot about lycanthropy, <laughs> baby. Definitely. What is that, my search history? <laughs> I was trying to hook up with this French baby, but she bit my balls, and now I'm a werewolf. <laughs> Biting balls, that's awesome. <laughs> An American president in Paris. <laughs> I like it. It would be a better movie. An American Werewolf cool. in the White House. That's Ooh, the trilogy. There it is. Hell yeah. There that's like, that's like the omen when the Damien becomes <laughs> yes, president. That's right. Scary. <laughs> oh, shit. We got the Japanese premiere coming, and I'm going to be a werewolf that night. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hillary, you got to tell him I got food poisoning. <laughs> Instead of puking in his lap like HW, I'm going to be eating his lap. I'm going to be eating this guy's <laughs> cock. <laughs> <laughs> no, now the Isle of Japan's in trouble. <laughs> we got a special relationship, but then I ate the British Prime Minister, baby. <laughs> I ruined that one too. <laughs> Fucked it up. <laughs> Done at 8 p.m. Uh, the p.m. is now my p.m. <laughs> You know what, Chelsea? Have the have Gingrich come over here on the nineteenth when the moon is full. Tell him I got a special present for him. <laughs> Boom! I'm gonna eat that fucker up. I'm gonna eat him right up. Tell him to dust himself with paprika. <laughs> and you think you're gonna get rid of me? Al's a fucking vampire, baby. <laughs> well, the definition of what is if, if I, is I a vampire? <laughs> 
I also, I think Mike Clinton's just like Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need some jello pudding. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, but it is a Bond villain thing where he's got all these Americans in a an old church. And here's something. Just a, a tip <sighs> yep. for when you're you're traveling the globe, if we ever get to do that again. Um, if you're in a strange land and someone gives you yes. a crinkled flyer <laughs> that says July 4 party, Americans only, perhaps, and just perhaps, you think about doing something else that night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just putting that out there. Yeah. Unless you get a free tote, then go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. What, what's the tote situation? Mm -hmm. Oh, it says, like, you know, uh, Club de Lune or, you know, oh, whatever the, the Moon nice. Club name is there. And, you know, July 4th Bash mm -hmm. 97. Yes. At the Lunar Lounge. Honey, yes, I know. I, we already have 57 of them, but 58 is the perfect number of totes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, meanwhile, so all these Americans go in. Uh, Seraphine stays out. Uh, Tom Everett Scott's going to look for whatever on the inside. And. The big beefy dude puts a fucking bulldozer to the door so no one can get out. Right. And this is when, like, I'm, I'm like, is this an R-rated movie or what? Is it just about fucking, uh, what should we call, uh, 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 is it just about Julie Delpy's tits or what? Like, because it's it's literally, <laughs> she throws a gargoyle on his head and you just sort of see him go, wah, and yep. you cut. Like, no, I want to see that go Splatter into him. Splatter town, Exactly. Dude, absolutely. Uh, like, have the fucking guts to do what a horror movie should do would just have some gore would be something. It would be pretty nice. But uh, instead, you know, you think, you know, werewolf movie, probably some nice, crazy action scenes. No, no, no. We, we introduce guns at this point. Yeah. We're just shooting at each Dude, other. Dude, why is there so much <laughs> gun play in this movie? Are I don't you get shitting it. shitting me? Because all these guys, they you know, the, the big clown comes out and he gives his whole speech about how he hates Americans. The cops show up and then get locked in with them. Yes. And then they all inject themselves with the fucking Hulk serum and they're going to turn into werewolves. And then it's just a big shootout at these werewolves. But then strikingly, though, this whole like werewolf serum thing is not, in fact, the most unbelievable part of this movie oh. at this moment. What, in fact, is the most unbelievable part is you have these two French cops talking to each other in a conversation that is just the two of them, <laughs> and they are both speaking English. Yeah. Kent, my kingdom for some fucking <laughs> subtitles and, and French language sure. being used At here. that point, why not just cast Americans as the French Yes. Cops? Yeah. It makes no sense. I mean, it's it's so useless. Like, was someone, I mean, because this was like Buena Vista put this out, which is weird, but like, so was someone at Disney like, no, we can't possibly have French spoken in this movie. We'll lose the whole audience. <laughs> like, it's so, it, it's Paris. I'm expecting to see some yellow but subtitles. That is why we keep going to American specific parties. And it's like, <laughs> if you don't have the fucking gall, like Charles D, <laughs> to fucking <laughs> go for the French. <laughs> Then make it a fucking American no. werewolf in Columbus, Ohio. Look, <laughs> we set the movie in gay Paris, okay? <laughs> so that's enough. We got to get more American stuff like this. You know what? We're going to kill the werewolves with bullets. Just any old bullets. Who gives a shit? Dude, there's just like, this is, it's like the fucking, the, the building lobby scene in the first Matrix. Like, yes. the gunplay here is outrageous. <laughs> well, they're just shooting all these werewolves. I mean, again, like, obviously, at the, the, the end of the original werewolf, he gets shot by a gun, and that's the end of it. That's cool, but, like, I don't know, for all these werewolves to just get shot, it's yeah. kind of boring. And there could have been some cool cynicism here where, where Andy, the Tom Everett Scott character, gets a gun, sees two werewolves going at it, shoots them, and one of them is her. Mm -hmm. Well, that happens, but then she survives. Exactly. Yes. That's what I'm saying. If he killed her dead, yes. it yes. would be something. Because that's, you know, what's funny is I thought, I, I, I'd i only seen this movie one time. I rented it, you know, back in the 90s. Had no memory of it. I was like, oh, cool. He shot her and she's dead and we'll have that same sudden ending Yes. Like the first movie. Oh, wouldn't has. that be nice? <laughs> oh, oh, wouldn't it though? <laughs> Instead, you'll believe you can see a, a, a werewolf get hit by a subway car and they run in, they have a fight there. 
And what he's, what? he's making his way through the subway car like Jason Voorhees. Yes, and, and he eats yeah. his heart. Which that the eating the heart yeah. part's kind I mean, of fun. At first, yeah. there's a struggle because oh, he's turned back into because yeah. he got shot or something. Yeah. He turned back into a human, and they want to do like he wants to do the serum so he can turn back into a werewolf. Uh, but Andy injects it into himself during the scuffle, and then eats him and eats yeah. his heart. Andre Skagasi gets the fuck. He turns oh, back well into normal, done. and then he gets yes. yeah. This, I mean, like, I was just, the, the slow motion, I mean, Steve already brought up, but the slow motion turn of Tom Everett Scott into this beast. I remember, I, this I also remember from the trailer, this, like, yes. slow motion shot. You're just like, oh, my God, it looks terrible. <laughs> and, like, it just, it's immediate. Like, he eats the heart, and he's like, oh, back to normal. Oh, there you go. It is just amazing how CGI has aged so poorly. Again, like, and I, I mean, I, I know I'm, I'm a fucking old guy, so that's what I'm talking about. But, like, I mean, like, 80, a movie from eight, 1981 shouldn't look better than 1997. Yeah. It yep. shouldn't. Like, nope. and we how was, does that make sense? We were sucking our own dick over CGI after Jurassic Park. Was that 94? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, that, and that still looks good because they, know how, to, looks they good knew how to do it. They actually committed to it, I guess. Yes. Like when I actually say, what is that? My search history <laughs> versus, and now this movie is like, oh, my search history. <laughs> I will say there is a great moment in this this subway scene before uh, Andre Skagasi gets it, uh, where he's the werewolf first and he's chasing after everybody on this train. The because the, you think because the whole thing is like you think the werewolf got hit by the subway yes. and then ooh he's there. The first lady to go down looks exactly like Roseanne. <laughs> it's like, and, and like a 19, like right when Roseanne's sitcom was started, she still had like the curly yeah, hair. Yeah, sure, sure. This woman gets eaten by this werewolf, looked exactly like Roseanne. It was fucking great. Probably the best part of the movie for me, I think. <laughs> uh, but he wins, he eats his heart, and then like, yeah, well, Julie Delpy's like, at, before that happens, she's asking him to kill her. Right. Because she can't take the pain and just end it, and then you can eat my heart because I think I'm the werewolf that killed you. And he's like, "No, I can't do it. You're gonna, you're gonna be okay. I can't do it. I haven't had sex with you. I need the points to win." <laughs> also, and this your, fr- your friends are dead. Why are you still doing sex points? <laughs> it's Shay, important. Say the fucking words. <laughs> yeah, it was on okay. a t-shirt. <laughs> um, the oh, so after he eats the heart, right? So he's victorious. Yes. He's got the head werewolf down. I guess, like, you know, in victory, he goes to howl like a wolf. And I don't know if they were sold out of sound effects at the sound effects <laughs> store or what was happening. But, like, this wolf howl that they give him at the end of this movie sounds terrible. And it's like, I'm sorry. It's a werewolf movie. You had one fucking job. Exactly. Wolf sound. You can just reuse the sound from the first movie, which sounds awesome. <sighs> it sounds so uh, terrible here. I could not even it's believe it. It's a Casio it. keyboard. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, uh, I'm sorry, we lost all the werewolf sounds. What we have here is Nick Nolte stretching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Uh, so what what happens now? Like, Sarah, oh, we have wait- Tom Arnold stubbing his toe. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, we have Polly Shore hungover. <laughs> we have yeah. uh, we've got Martin Short farting. <laughs> we have a uh, Bill Clinton looking good pornography. <laughs> got a uh, Tom Scarab burping. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I would like to hear this all played on a cast. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, and the oh, so here comes your tacked on ending with the title card that comes up several moons later. But well, I, I want to point out Seraphine wakes up in an ambulance. She's like, I love you, Andy. And this dude is oh, like, right? My name is Bruno, but I am easy. Yeah. It's like, shit, dude. Can you were yeah. the wrong ambulance lady. <laughs> what did I tell you? $1,000 for a pervert to give you a ride. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and it's like, man, can we div- just don't have this scene just don't. or do different it's dialogue? Not funny. It's not fun. It's like, oh, yeah, cool. It's a, a sexually aggressive EMT. Everyone's literal worst nightmare. My name is Buck, and I look to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, this is the. Oh, this is, uh, oh, we have another one here. It's uh, Quentin Tarantino looking at a shoe catalog. Uh, We have a Paul G. Mati getting an erection. (laughs) (laughs) We need to hear that one again. 
Perfect. Oh boy! So then, what, what would be nice to see several moons later? But the World Trade Center, and, yeah, and then also they, Lady Liberty. They jump off the Statue of Liberty. The ring falls over, so they're both gonna do. They're dressed, you know, bride and groom, uh-huh. and they've broken in again to the Statue of Liberty again. What are we doing? If only because if you've ever been up there. The windows are like totally sealed and they're like small, right? totally small little view windows. Yeah. I, you can't just do stuff like this. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. At least, though, in this instance, when they dive off, it's a fucking, you know, just a straight on statue. Mm. Unlike the Eiffel Tower that, you know, comes right, out yeah. like it's at least kind of a more straight drop. But here's the thing. <sighs> They're doing like they're doing the whole like fucking around up there, and then like the ring falls. Like, just let it go. Yeah, and then you know they jump off to get the ring as well. And oh, oh, we didn't tie ourselves completely. There's one that's, and they don't even the the friend is there, the survivor. Yes, Chris, <laughs> the designated survivor, yeah, the designated uh-huh. survivor, and he doesn't even get to tie it up in time. It's just they hug each other when they get the ring. He puts it on while falling. And then they're able to go back up with the one bungee cord. Yes. I find out that my wife to be is into, or my husband to be is into wedding stunts. It's off. Yeah, yeah it's definitely. I, I, off. I, I gotta go. I'm sorry. Oh, you're both both American friends, and you you like to jump off building. <laughs> Would yeah. you like to hang out off the chapel? Yeah. Thank you for yeah. saving me from uh, like a therapy, but we're gonna part. Ways here, exactly. and I hope you enjoy the rest of your trip. Enjoy Rome. Yeah. Let's so bye. Weird. She didn't want to exchange vows underwater while scuba diving. <laughs> Baby, come on. It'll be it'll be so romantic if we both get hit by cannonballs in our stomach when we're saying our vows. <laughs> oh, um, we don't have a an, an werewolf noise, but we do have Jeff Goldblum being told that they don't have any more red wine in the restaurant. Ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, actually, yeah, we're totally out of wolf sound effects, but we do have Tom Hanks being amused by a New Yorker cartoon. (laughs) Oh, uh, we have Holly Hunter flossing. (laughs) Uh, Oh, and yeah, we do not... We don't have anything, uh, any of the werewolf stuff, but we do have uh, Morgan Freeman after eating a delicious meal. Hmm. (laughs) Uh, we have uh, Anthony Hopkins after a fresca. <laughs> we we do it. We have uh, Obama mid sentence. Oh. <laughs> uh, we have uh, John Lovitz finding a penny. Hey, <laughs> this is Charlton Heston realizing his car won't start. <laughs> we we have Adolf Hitler stubbing his toe. Well, <laughs> oh, we don't have to play it. You know what it sounds like. <laughs> hell of a soundboard you got going. <laughs> that's, that's, too, that's too shabby. A lot of rare bits. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have Tim Allen. It's not the sound you think it is, though. <laughs> ah, fuck. Uh, we have uh, William Shatner orgasming. <gasps> oh, <laughs> I like that. I'm coming. <laughs> no, that's the wrong one. No. Oh. That's the one that he says it. It's supposed to sound <laughs> something like a howl. We have two, we have two separate. Yeah, I, we, I we, pressed we, the wrong button. Yeah, there. I'm right. sorry. I'm coming. <laughs> that's the one he made for his wedding day. He just wanted to quit on the aisle when they were coming down. Oh, uh, coincidentally, because he's in this movie, we have Tom Everett Scott acting. <laughs> We have Leonard Nimoy straining to pick up an air conditioner. (laughs) That's what killed him. (laughs) Why will no one help me? (laughs) Also, why did I buy this window unit? (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) I'm fucking Spock. I should afford central air. Uh, that's the end of this stupid movie, though. Yeah, yeah it's done. It, yeah. It's done, and then, yeah. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Would anybody recommend it? No, no. Uh, yeah, I, I say in the uh, the other movie, the other uh, episode there, that uh, American Werewolf in London is one of my favorite movies. This is not. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> ill-conceived. 
I do think there's a 90s version of this movie that's peppy, fun, and has some of the spirit of the original movie. It just, it's not this shit. Yeah. Chris Cabin. Yeah, it's awful. I remember seeing this in theaters and like, it's like, I feel like this was going to be cursed. Like, even uh, like, I guess something like the cursed is similar, like, yes. attempt to oh, update God, the werewolf. Yeah. Like, it, they just fucked it up. Bad Moon was literally the last good one. Yeah. And like, yeah, the, the the camera looks terrible. All the acting's terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah. Terrible. Eric Siska. Yeah, you know, instead of dog shit, I guess it's wolf shit. I, mm -hmm. I really, I, I couldn't stand it. Um, the original is great and the classic. Check out patreon.com slash we hate movies for a full length episode on a good movie. Indeed. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend this. I would recommend replacing it with the sound of uh, Ethan Hawke getting excited that his kid hit a home run in baseball. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> no, this movie fucking sucks. It's, yeah, yeah. it's total shit town. I think on the WLM for American Werewolf in London, I recommend Howling 2. Definitely do Howling 2. I, I would also say maybe scour your Pluto TVs and your Tubi TVs because I think that's where I saw it floating around most Ooh, recently. And like I said on that episode too, with that movie Howling 2, Your Sister's a Werewolf, Werewolf Orgy, baby, and Ooh. Christopher Plummer. Or not Christopher that, Lee. Christopher Lee <clears throat> floating around in there. So, oh, yeah. so yeah, there's there's other werewolf properties out there. You know, Wolf of Snow Hollow. There's things out there you can find. This is not one that is worth your time in any capacity, especially if you were a fan of the first movie. Uh, but that is going to do it for this edition of the show that's American Werewolf in Paris, directed by Anthony Waller from 97. Now, uh, like Eric mentioned, if you want more We Hate Movies, check out patreon.com slash We Hate Movies. Lots of the bonus stuff will be spookily oh, yeah. related this this month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to, uh, we're doing Once in a Lifetime again this. So we're right. doing yeah. a little movie Ooh. called Devil's Diary. Holy smokes, that was something it's else. It's a crazy movie from 2007 or so, but the episode is fantastic. Let me uh, let these guys know what we're doing for Animation Damnation Ooh, nice. Month. Uh, this month live right now, uh, we're doing a Halloween special from Doug. Ooh. Remember <laughs> Doug, yeah, folks? I'm excited. Absolutely. Yeah. Holy Killer shit. tofu. Do, 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 on, do, on the Gleep do, do. Glossary to tie into the spooktacular, we're talking about the scariest thing of all. Oh, what's uh -oh. that? Bureaucracy. With... <laughs> Chancellor Valorum. Wow, oh, I love that. Turn yeah. stamp I, personally, I don't have confidence in him. But. <laughs> uh, but as always, here on the main feed, the show continues. We are just starting the 2021 Halloween Spooktacular. Steve, what are we doing next? We are going 20 years later, my friend. H2O, Halloween 20 years later. Oh, uh, yeah. We've got Josh Hartnett with a fantastic haircut this movie. Uh, Michelle Williams. I'm excited to see Michael Myers in California. <laughs> I'm excited to see uh, Adam Arkin get his again. Oh, hell yeah. Nice. Big Adam Arkin head over here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And this, of course, to tie in with the Halloween kills coming out. Yes, of course. We thematically program things on this show. Mm-hmm. So until next week, where you see Laurie Strode drink a lot of wine, <laughs> I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. Chris Gavin. Take it easy. We all go a little mad sometimes. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? Sometimes. That is what I... Time to keep your appointment with the Wicker Man. They're coming to get you, Barbara. He's sick for fuck's sake. He's seen one too many movies. Now, Sid, don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. What's the fucking rules for the man? What an excellent day for an exorcism. That was a HeadGum Podcast.